out of Akron, Ohio, representing Team Popping the Boys, the headline god, Jeremy Lambert, and his co-host, speaking out of Atlanta, Georgia, representing more than one royal family, the king of indie viewing, Stephen Jensen, and this is the spotlight on fightful welcome everyone to the spotlights i am jeremy lambert that is steven jensen and shout out to big tech mlj as always for the intro it is thursday march 21st we got a lot to talk about in the world of professional wrestling steven jensen how you doing buddy i'm doing good man just waking up ready to talk about some wrestling got a lot of good stuff to talk about like you said and we got a big giveaway today as well, based on the interview that I know you're going to tell everybody about. So, um, so yeah, Jeremy, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and get into it. We had uh, Jeremy Padauer from from Jazzwares and Kyle Peterson, big time collector, who just wrote a a book, the Jacks Superstar uh, Classic Guide, the Guide to the Jacks Superstar Classic. I think I got that right. I should probably uh, double check on that one. Um, but yes, he wrote it's a, it's a gigantic collector's guide um, where he catalogs basically all the Jack's classic superstar figures. And uh, we talk about the book. Jeremy Padauer wrote the wrote the Ford for it. And we're going to give away a copy of the book. All you got to do is comment in the comment section here. Just comment. Um, comment Jack's classics. We'll, we'll go with that as is the comment. So put it Jack classics jack's classics and say that three times fast in the comments and also if you're watching on vod you can put it in the comment section there as well we're going to give this away next week so uh if you would like to enter you don't have to be present live right now to enter you can comment if you're watching on demand comments in the comments there jack's classics you'll be entered in we'll give away this book next week so there you go everybody if you are a collector uh, especially of the the classic superstar figures or just any wrestling figures. This is a book you definitely want to check out, and here's your chance to to get it for free. <clears throat> yeah, and it's like it's legit, like a hundred dollar book. Like this is a this this book's the real deal. Um, and yeah, as Jeremy mentioned, we had Jeremy Padauer and Kyle Peterson on for interviews that you guys are here later today. And uh, Jeremy created the Jack's Classic Superstar line, so really cool to have the two of them on the show later today. And <clears throat> excuse me, and really, really nice of a uh, Jeremy for Jeremy Lambert. It's hard, Jeremy and Jeremy. Jeremy Lambert here um, putting this this uh, contest together. Really, really cool. Um, I'm waiting on my own copy of the book. Actually, I bought a signed copy from Kyle that I should be getting sometime soon. So I've, I've, I'm a I'm a actual user of this product as well myself. So there you go. All right, uh, we got a lot to talk about, Jensen. Let's uh, waste no time get into let's start with what i'm sure people are expecting us to start with i need to finish the story in the wwe the story never finishes cody rhodes was on raw kind of sort of crying not so i responded to the rock jensen the rock came out on friday and he did the rock concert you now he took shots at cody he took shots at seth Took shots at uh, John Morant, which I thought was hilarious. John Morant even responded to him. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, and then he, he used the 50 cent meme. Like, what do you, what do you say F me for? Um, and then he he addressed Cody's mom and cut basically the same promo he cut on social media. But I realize not everybody maybe saw that one. But he, you know, he said, I'm going to beat your son. He's going to leave him laying into a pool of his own blood and tears. Then the only belt you're going to be handed at WrestleMania is this weight belt that I've whooped your son with. And then Cody on Raw responded, and he said, Rock is a, a whiny, I, I can't curse five minutes in. I'm trying to be on my best behavior. <clears throat> oh, I, I, He said he's a whiny B. And he said, you know, when the bell rings, are we going to get the great one? Are we going to get... Are we going to get this guy who hasn't wrestled in a decade whose body is going to fail him under the bright lights? He said, you don't want any smoke with my mom. She beats up people at Willie Nelson concerts. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I don't know if I'm going to finish the, the story. I don't know, but I'm going to go out there 
I'm going to do my best for all the crybabies around the world, and I'm going to show them what a champion looks like. Jensen, I know you were probably fired up after this promo. Yeah, it was great. He said that The Rock isn't a heel. He's an a-hole. Yes. So I like I like that a lot. Um, So first off, <clears throat> when it came to The Rock and the whole Rock concert thing, obviously I like that he's leaning into the heel, like the Hollywood Rock stuff. I think that that's really smart. And it's also just another sign of like thing is changing in the WWE. I just feel like under the last regime, they wouldn't have even, you know what I mean? They just be like, everyone knows the rock theme, the classic rock theme. They probably never, never even taken the chance on him going heel in this scenario either. They probably, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like a lot of this build to WrestleMania, obviously the whole, we want Cody movement and everything. It's been, a lot of it has been them listening to the fans. I feel like the new the new people in charge of the WWE. And part of that is like them probably looking at social media and seeing all these people being like, we want to see the, you know, hear the Rock's old theme and like the Hollywood Rock and all this stuff. And they're actually pretty much giving all that to us. They're giving us like this hybrid like version of the Rock that we've kind of seen before and we kind of haven't seen before. It's like this. And I think that it's working really, really well. And then for him to <clears throat> for him to talk about that story or talk about Cody not finishing his story, basically, and how night one of WrestleMania, he's going to hand Cody's mom a belt front row covered in Cody's blood. I mean, I could see that happening, too. Like, I really could see that, like, being the scenario that happens at Wrestle. I really think they're going to stack the deck as much as humanly possible on Cody for night two. Like I, I, I'm leaning more and more to thinking like Rock and Roman are winning night one. Rock's actually handing that belt off to Cody's mom. It's going to be bloodline rules. And then it's going to be up to like Cody's friends and other people. Like I think we might see like John Cena and or like Stone Cold Steve Austin and like people oh, from wow, like, really? I really, I think, we'll, I think we'll see people from like the Rock's past, like, or people, you know what I mean? The, the other, the other like, top good guys of WWE's history could like, you know, I know people don't love the guy, but I mean, I, I don't know. Hulk Hogan might not be good to be involved in this at all. No, but like, leave him out. Austin but, and Cena fine. I'm okay with, but, 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 the, but you understand the reason I'm bringing him up. Is yeah, because, yeah. I get like, what you're going if, for. If the yeah. idea is like Hogan, Austin, Cena, and now you're like passing it to Cody. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, and those, and it's, it's wild. Cause they have the opportunity to actually have those three guys involved. Like they're, but I, I digress. The idea behind that obviously is what people understand there is that, you know, they're, they're, they're literally handing the torch to Cody as the next John Cena, who was the, the Steve Austin, who was the Hulk Hogan, you know? So it's like, I, <clears throat> anyway, that all said, I could see all this happening. Um, I've, <laughs> I've talked about it before, but like last year at WrestleMania, I'll never forget negative Hold one. I'm on. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but, uh, but before you get into this story, mm -hmm. don't you think having the babyface Avengers for Cody is kind of weak for him to win the title? Well, uh, so like in comparison to him just winning clean straight up, like it was just him and Roman. I mean, and listen, obviously I love that scenario also. I, and that actually I'd probably prefer in a lot of ways if like, it wasn't bloodline rules. It was just Cody versus the raw, or sorry, Cody versus Roman and Cody just beat Roman just straight up. Like, yeah, that, I, I get what you're saying, but I also feel like a lot of the story heading into this year is based on last year. And last year, the only reason Cody lost is because the bloodline outnumbered him. And now he's going to need not, not to happen this year. They're, they're going to try like, again. The, I'm actually okay if they come in because you suspect Bloodline's going to come in, even though it's just right now, Solo and Jimmy, I guess Rock comes out. But I don't need, and I've said this before, Roman should not be touched in, in this whole thing. I don't need Roman eating a finisher buffet and then Cody, you know, being the last one with the crossroads and then pinning Roman. I think that's very weak. If they come out and they brawl around Cody and Roman, like they cut off Rock, Rock can eat the finisher buffet. That's fine. But I don't need everybody else. I, I don't need Roman being touched in all this because I think that cheapens Cody's win. 
No, I, I agree with that a thousand percent. And I don't want anybody to touch Roman. I want Cody to win clean from that sense. But I'm talking about like, just like what you're saying, like, we, yeah, we only know those members of the bloodline right now, but you know, Rikishi could come out. I mean, you could see the debut of Jacob Fatu or something. I mean, there could be other members of, we don't know what's going to go down in this Jay versus Jimmy match. I mean, yeah, you know, um, could that lead into something for the main event of night two a little bit also? I, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things where I could see the opportunity where multiple bloodline members come out and Cody's going to need his, his friends to stop them from getting involved. But I'm with you. I don't think anybody should touch Roman, but what I was about to say is, you know, the whole handing the belt to Cody's mom thing. I'll like, I'll never forget last year, at WrestleMania, Cody's family being front row for Cody versus Roman negative one being front row for Cody versus Roman. Cody gives his weight belt to negative one to Brody Jr. And like Cody still loses. And I was like, this is insane. Like, um, well, he should have won. He should have, he should have fought harder. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a rib at a, at AEW actually. They were like, we're not gonna let an AEW contracted wrestler be involved in this negative one there. They, they can't. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I'm kidding about that, obviously. But I also joked about how like, they can't Scott's tots the wrestling club. Like you're like, you're, you're bringing the entire wrestling club they all can. the way to they can. Right. But I just, I, keep, I just, people keep saying this. Oh, they can't do this for the, they did this in front of make a wish children last year. And they did it with Austin friggin' theory beating John Cena. They can easily put Roman Reigns, the most dominant champion of this era over Cody Rhodes. If they're going to put Austin theory, over John Cena, people need to stop with this. And I'm talking directly to you, Jensen. Yeah. They need to stop with, oh, they can't do this in front of the wrestling club. They don't do anything about <laughs> fuck about these kids. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a very strong point. Um, that's a very strong point. But this is also me obviously coping and trying to play my own mental gymnastics where like they, they can't do this again for this reason. Like they did it to Brody, they can't do this to the wrestling club, they can't do this to more make a wish kids. They can't do this to Steven Jensen again for another year. Are you kidding me? So, but I do think that night one of WrestleMania, I legitimately think that the rock's going to follow through on what he talked about on SmackDown. I think he's going to do that. I think, and, and I think it's possible Cody takes the pin on night one also like that. They just, they beat him down and leave him bloody. And the, the Rhodes family is crying in the front row, uh, heading into night two. And then, they get their big redemption and Cody hands his mom the, the actual the WWE championship after the, you know, at the end of night too, you know, and then he's finishing the story. So anyway, the actual Cody promo, the response I thought was fantastic. That was uh, obviously I'm biased. And I, every week I come here and I'm like, that was like the best Cody Rhodes promo ever. I loved it. I had use bumps. I was tearing up, but I mean, this might've been his best promo since he's been, it, back in WWE, it really might. Like I saw a lot of people online really were into this, and you know, and you know, I'm not. This isn't a whole conversation of like is the Attitude Era back, but I do like the that they're giving some of these guys a little more leniency on the microphone too. It's like they're 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 the way they're speaking is a, a little edgier. The language they're using is a little more adult, but they're not like crossing massive lines to where like you know a kid fan couldn't still watch this and his parents like be uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, and, and I think I this know. Is, he saw, he called, he said, Dwayne is a little dick. I think kids know what that is. I like, you know what I mean? They're not kids. No LDS think, little dick syndrome. No, I, but I mean, I mean, I listen, I don't have kids. You do. I don't know how, how young at this point, like what, what, what music they're listening to and all this stuff. But My like, kids thought Cody looked like Joe Biden. So <laughs> no, Dude, but, like, I don't know how I can't remember. how I, I had to have been in elementary school knowing what the word dick was like, what that meant. I had to. Have. Sure. But little dick syndrome is that's funny. That's a whole explanation though. That's funny. It's a joke. I would have seen that like a Jim Carrey movie and thought that was funny. You know what I mean? Like, I that's no big deal. But anyway, I I thought that uh, I thought that this is what Cody needed this too. Like he he needed to. I I, I liked the promo where he was crying personally because I could you know I, I related to that you a like lot. Like every Cody promo, of course. But 
my point Tony is he could come out he, there and he, say steven he, jensen quit tweeting so much about me and jensen would be like yeah okay cody i will i, I will i would I tweet, I okay, tweet I missed, about you anymore i'll, I'll stop tweeting at you dude i'll stop tweeting i got you <laughs> this um, is such a great promo he personally talked about me oof. um that'd be that'd be pretty cool but uh <laughs> anyway so yeah, I I think Cody needed this promo too because like you know it's a big contrast from the one that he had last week. Like we saw him crying and emotional and stuff the week prior. This week he's kind of like sacking up. You know he's just like this is it's time to fight. Like no more of this. You know I got I, he said what he needed to say. People understand where Cody's coming from and how important all this is to him. And now it's time for him to fight back. You know so and we're only like what three weeks away from WrestleMania. So. Heating up, heating up. We're, 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 you're getting close. You're getting close to Cody finishing that story. Nightmare family. Shout out Spurs and Super Chat. Guys, you can leave a Super Chat. Get your question, comment, say it right, right on the air. Leave a thumbs up on my video as well if you'd like to do that. Subscribe to the channel. Shout out Spurs says, if you think about it, Cody can't do much if he doesn't mention his family or break the fourth wall. I agree. He's a, kind of a terrible promo. He's got to go too much inside baseball. No. <laughs> False. I'm, I'm going to elaborate on that. He had to use AEW references. He he used <laughs> same material he used from his AEW time. You know, he had to break the fourth wall where he was crying about, oh, Rock, you came back. You thought you needed to save WWE, but WWE actually needed to save you. It was all stuff that he said. Yeah. Cutting great promos. And the yeah. fans are going nuts. The, the the crowd reaction keeps getting louder. People, more and more piped people in. are singing Kingdom. Yeah. The, they, 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 they piped it. They piped oh in God. the woe. It's, it's wild because that wasn't even a thing last WrestleMania. Last WrestleMania? It was. People weren't doing the woe last WrestleMania. Were they not? I don't think so. Mm, it's, like this has been a thing within the last year that like that really picked up. I thought it I picked mean, up at last WrestleMania. Well, I mean, he lost the last WrestleMania. Well, yeah. I would mean, like the whoa, but I, I, I it, it might have, it might have been, it may have been at, but it wasn't. They weren't doing it in AEW. They weren't doing. No, it they definitely weren't game. doing it in AEW. I, they, they weren't doing it like his the first WrestleMania. I thought last WrestleMania is when, uh, is when it did kind of start. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you're wrong. But you might not. You're be. the Jensen. I mean, you're the you're the Jensen. You're the Cody expert here. You should know these things. You're the full time wrestling reporter guy. Like, I, I, mean, I don't report on Cody's theme song and when the woe started. <laughs> no, you report on obscure <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, yeah, which I appreciate. I, I always love seeing a Jeremy, a Jeremy headline before I even see the article. I'm like, yeah, Jeremy wrote that. Uh, um, but my point is, last year we all figured you like it couldn't like. Cody wasn't going to get bigger and like hotter or whatever than he was last year. Right. It was like, this was the moment. The moment is past. There's no way it, this will be a better opportunity. And like it, it's actually is bigger now, which is crazy. Like they actually over the last the year, I think the rock helps. I'm not going to downplay that. I, I like that the rock's back and that he's doing what he's doing. I would have been mad if the rock, you know, stole Cody's spot and it was just rock and Roman and Cody got boxed out. That would have pissed me yeah. off. But like considering where we're at, I, I love the, the rock being a heel and we're clearly building to Cody versus the rock one-on-one -on -one down the line. Also, it was going to be awesome, which is another reason why I think it's a, it's a possibility. The rock could pin Cody night one and come, you know, come through on this, on this promise with like the belt to, to Cody's mom and everything. Um, because I think Cody will beat The Rock one on one eventually as well. So, I mean, they're positioning Cody to be the guy. So, like, it's it's happening this year. He's winning the, the championship from Roman this year. Um, and it's crazy because, like I said last year, I was saying there's no possible way they could heat this up hotter now, like hotter a year from now, even like right now than they did last year, and they actually have to their credit. So. Why did Cody dress like he was going to his own funeral? <clears throat> dress however he wants to, dude. I'm not going to criticize how Cody Rose dresses. Look at me. We're in a GameStop play. I don't even work at GameStop. Right, but it was, was he was wearing all black. Like, he was dressing for his funeral. Yeah, I mean. Should have dyed his hair black again. 
I thought about that actually, <laughs> how he did that um, for the dog call. Was it the, was the dog? The dog, the dog, the yeah, dog he caller returned, match. Yeah, his only turn for against Brody. That is Eric Black because it was a Superman thing that nobody understood. Yeah. It was an yeah, he should have done it again. He should have been like, this is an AEW reference referencing <laughs> Superman. Have you ever seen yeah. Always Always Sunny where uh, where Dennis dyes his hair black and like he's trying to look like Superman? Yeah. <laughs> that's a, a crap. That's the best. For people who don't watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, you, you probably don't get like the majority of the references I make on this show. Like any any weird subtle thing is like almost always from that's my favorite show ever on um, that in South Park. So I reference that stuff all the time. But anyways, that's off topic. I, I do you have anything else to add, uh, you know, other than Man, trolling troll about the day. Is it other than trolling about like how do you actually feel about this Cody Rhodes promo? Like how, I, I mean, it. we're, headed, we're, it we're like three weeks into WrestleMania. Like this is a big deal. Yeah, it was good. It was a good promo. Cody's always a good promo. I got I can't say anything bad about Cody. Like it, I think I've I've been honest when I am honest that I do think Cody should win. I, I genuinely do think Cody should win. I don't think you're gonna have another opportunity with this guy if he loses. Like I it's he's probably done at this point if he loses why are you screaming? <laughs> your your wife just dm me okay all That's right I, i'm gonna read this out i'm i know she's watching i'm gonna read this out loud this is leaked <sighs> y'all are so perfect for one another okay so here you go it says <laughs> sean beat bulldog in the uk in front of bulldog's disabled sister yeah. and he dedicated the match to you. They screwed Brett in Canada. Sammy lost in Montreal in front of family. Drew lost in the UK. They would have Cody lose in front of the wrestling club, collect their tears, and toast them, a uh, toast with them after. Facts. My wife gets it. If you, oh. it's all factual. I thought she was on our. I thought she was on my side. Eh. With this, this one thing, I thought she was on my side. No, she's actually worse than I am when it comes to. She thinks Cody's like the biggest goober in the world. <laughs> no, this can't be true. I have y'all's y'all's wedding magnet on my fridge in my in my kitchen. You guys can't do this to me. I do think she genuinely wants Cody to win, like largely for your sake, but I also think she wants Cody to lose because she knows i'm just gonna be relentless with it and i think she finds that funny like i said last week I've, we've talked about it before but the <clears throat> the uh the most watched episode we've ever done of this show was the episode right after wrestlevania when cody had lost so cody losing is good for the show probably actually i think even more people would would like to celebrate this year than you know be bummed out i will say the one thing the one silver lining, and this is incredibly selfish, is <clears throat> um, I, I I've, t- I've talked about the other week how I pulled a assigned one of ten Roman Reigns card recently. They haven't sent it to me yet because he actually has to sign it and mail it. But I bought I've got the redemption. For people who don't know, sometimes they don't have the the card ready, so like you get like a like a thing that you have to scan online, and then the person actually signs it and sends it to you. But so the only the only upside is like the value of that card will continue to rise the longer that Roman holds his title belt. That's really the only way I can possibly cope cope through that. Um, Jeremy, the thing is, see, similar to last night when Adam Cole cut that promo about Wardlow, which we'll talk about AEW in a little bit. Oh God, I'm. You know how many times I've been like at WrestleMania, I'm going to become Cody's going to become the WWE champion. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm going to, like, I feel like I'm becoming the champion when this happens. Not, though. A little bit. There, there's a lot a of A little people. bit? What? The way that Cody is, I, obviously, I'm not involved, all right? I get it. But my, my point is, the way that Cody is positioning all of this, especially with this promo last week and everything, is we are doing this together. This is for all of us. This is for the longtime fans. These are for this the rider guys. This you. is for my family. It's smart. This is how you build your top baby face in a professional wrestling company. This is what people are like confused by this because it's been so long since we've actually had somebody who could accomplish this. You know, wrestling fans nowadays, especially Sammy Zayn was doing this whole thing last year, except better. Let me ask you, do you, you were pretty on the, uh, you were pretty on the, uh, the bandwagon of, of, 
Sammy beating Roman in Montreal. In yeah. hindsight, do you think that actually would have been a good idea? Yeah. You still think that that would have been a good idea right now? Yeah. What else we got? What else we got? <laughs> why? Why? What? Is, what is the issue with me thinking Sami Zayn should have won in Montreal? Why is that wrong? Because Cody is going to be winning at WrestleMania this year, and it means a lot more that Roman has held this title for this long. Okay, you thought Cody should have won at WrestleMania last year, though. In yeah, hindsight. that would have. Yeah, and then he, then Sammy definitely shouldn't have won last year if Cody was going to win at WrestleMania. No, I think Sammy should have won last year in Montreal. That's yeah, the whole thing. You're, you're like Cody, this pure baby face. He's rallying the fans behind <laughs> them. He's cutting these passionate promos. Sammy Zayn did this same thing last year, except better because his story was better as part of the bloodline. There was a real emotional attachment with Sammy taking on the bloodline and taking out Roman Reigns. Cody last year, all he did, he won the Rumble. Good for him. And then he inserted, and then he got his title shots off of that. Sammy's story was better. This year, what happened? Cody won the Rumble again. And then he stepped aside for The Rock. And then he reinserted himself in the picture. I'm more excited for Cody and Rock than I am for Cody and Roman. I don't care about Cody and Roman right now. Cody and Rock's the money matchup. Cody can face Rock. And Sami Zayn should come back and face Roman and win. Last week, you were like, I don't think Sami Zayn should even be Gunther for the Intercontinental title. That's now we've, now we've, now, now we've jumped say. to him beating Roman. Okay. <laughs> um, Mike in the chat, to a legendary title reign Max. like Roman's, will end. Oh, sorry, to think a legendary title reign like Roman's will end with this clown Cody winning is a shame. Well, everyone, I'm just going to break the news right now, unless something catastrophic happens. Oh, no. In two weeks. Oh. Okay. We got WrestleMania coming up, two or three weeks, whatever. We have a guest coming to the show, returning guest. Yeah, I'm afraid for Roman and The Rock with this guest. Teal Rhodes will be on for WrestleMania week. The sister of Cody Rhodes, the mother, or sorry, the daughter of Cody's mother, of course, um, who The Rock keeps referencing. Teal, who I'm sure will be right there front row, just like she was last year with the family. Um, she'll be and on to talk about... Sorry, go ahead. I got to pull back all my trolling with Teal because she. Oh no! I want you to go ahead and I, know, I want you to go ahead and and and, and grow a pair and, nope. and, and and have this same energy with her. No. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. Absolutely um, not. Teal has already attacked me. I shouldn't say attacked. Uh, Teal has already come after me when I was praising Cody. Because she thought I was taking shots at Cody. I will definitely not actually take shots at Cody with Teal. Yep, complete coward. I will <laughs> fully admit it. I have no problem admitting it. See, that's the difference between me and everybody else. Is when I call people cowards, they try to defend themselves. Like, oh, no, that's not me. I have no issue admitting it. I know exactly uh, how to play the game. And I know exactly where some bread is buttered and I know how to play to certain audiences. And I know better than to play troll Cody Rhodes with Teal Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah. Big mistake. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the plan is to have, I'm not dumb back. everybody, <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about, you know, the T TWC. Um, I'm sorry, TCW. Jeez. I was saying the, the wrestling club just a second ago, Turnbuckle championship wrestling. Well, we'll probably talk about the wrestling club also, but, um, but, Teal revived uh, Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling recently. We talked about Scotty. We talked about that with Scotty Riggs last week, and um, they got the Dusty Rhodes Foundation. They got stuff coming up a uh, WrestleMania weekend with that, and of course, we're going to get Teal's thoughts on this whole story that involves her family and Cody finishing the story at WrestleMania. So I'm really looking forward to, to having Teal back on the show. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm. I mean, that's. That's a big time guest for us, WrestleMania week, considering it, it has legitimate tie ins to the main event of WrestleMania, both nights of WrestleMania, which is huge. Um, so, Teal and Co Teal and Brandy, not doing it. I'm not stupid. <sighs> yeah. Even The Rock ain't going after them. No, no, they have not, at least not yet. I feel like <clears throat> I'm actually surprised Teal hasn't been brought up in the story on screen but she's always she's there often like they show her on camera all the time 
I don't know. The Rock does the Rock have a like a sister? I maybe because obviously like the Rock's mom is the Rock's mom has been like a lot of the events and stuff. So like we all know who, who she is, you know. Um, maybe it's just easier for the story when it's kind of like you know the two moms, you know, you're kind of digging at. But I feel like Teal's going to be brought up at some point. At the very least, she'll be on screen. And, she, and she's going to have plenty of thoughts about all of this. I can't wait to hear what she has to say. Last year, <laughs> I talked to her briefly after Cody lost. And um, I'll just pull the curtain back now because it doesn't matter at this point. I, I DM'd her about song. I can't remember. I, I think I'd put up like like a post about Dusty or something. And she responded and DM'd me about it or something. Because I, I also I'll tweet about like, like I have like old Cody VHS footage for wrestling and stuff. And I'll randomly put Cody stuff out there. And I, I told, I told her something right after WrestleMania. I was like, I was just like, yeah, I, I just, I can't believe they did that to Cody. Like, I just can't believe it. And then she just in all caps was like huge bummer. You know what I mean? It's just like, she was so, she was so, we were all just so disappointed. People like right. Gunnar Mathis who fly out there for these things. Um, Rock mentioned, you know, Cody was a mistake. He mentioned Dustin. He mentioned sister 20 years apart, which was Kristen. Yeah. But he just kind of didn't mention that Teal and Cody are only three years apart. Yeah. So unless he's calling Teal a mistake as well, in which case. I wouldn't I don't think, imply that. She will kill you. I don't think he wants any heat with teal or brandy there's a reason why he ain't going at them there's yeah. a reason why i think the right. reason why i stopped my trolling <laughs> there as well <laughs> don't want none of that no not absolutely dull. not and i mean dude this is also <clears throat> i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm just gonna pull the curtain back on everyone today so there was gunner we've had on the show before gunner mathis i talk about him all the time become one of my really good friends and he is the most impressive collector of Cody Rhodes memorabilia out there. And he, uh, he helps me get my cards graded by SGC and stuff. He works at a card shop, but is a great dude. And last, and because he, he collects literally everything Cody Rhodes. So like if it's Cody Rhodes branded, it's official merchandise, he will purchase it. So that includes all of the world championship belts that Cody has held. He buys all the replicas. And last year, he got ahead of himself and cause you know, Roman had the both world title belts. Gunner bought both world title belts, like flew all the way to WrestleMania. He buys like hundreds of dollars worth of like Cody custom merch, like Cody shoes, Cody jacket, you know, it's, I love it. You know what I mean? As a Cody Rhodes fan, it's like the, it's the dream is like what he's doing. And he, he bought all this stuff last year like flew out there. Cody loses. He has these two title belts that he doesn't need anymore. And I believe he's already purchased the new Roman gold universal title. You can't keep doing this to us. That's going to be like, you got like, you got to come through here. Okay. It's, I it's, mean, this is the equivalent <coughs> of just being like a, I don't know, a Maple Leafs fan or I'll, I'll try to put it in, in football terms, a, a Bills fan, you know, he's a, just, it's the same as being a, a Buffalo Bills fan, right? Just well, I mean, yeah, you get you can close to the to, title and you never win it. Yeah, one, yeah, and it kind of it's like not really as close to the title, but it, you know, with my Minnesota Vikings, you know, I bring this up often as well because I every year, especially recently, like we've had a really good team, and this year we, I think we should have a really good team too. It's all going to depend on who we draft a quarterback and if Sam Darnold can like hold us over until then, but. We have a great team and without getting into it, you know, I think we have the best receiver core and we got a really good defense, especially defensive coordinator and Brian Flores and stuff. We have all the pieces right there. And every season I get really excited. I'm like, okay, even if they don't win the Super Bowl, like I love it. I love it. They've never won the Super Bowl ever. But like if they just have a good season, make the playoffs, but man, if they could just win the Super Bowl before I die, that's really the thing. My grandpa never got to see it. My dad's getting up there in age. Like just, just make this happen for us. But with the NFL, there's 32 teams. It isn't predetermined. I mean, so much stuff can go wrong. There's injuries. Allegedly. Well, yeah, that's an actually another conversation we can get into because I think based on the way that sports gambling has become so prevalent, I think that things are being messed with a little bit in certain ways in pro sports. But that's a whole other conversation. But my point is, is like, WWE can just book this to happen. They can just, have, just let us have this. Like, 
And if not, and if not Roman, and take Sami Zayn out of it because that is not happening at this point. Who then? Who? Who? Who, who? who? Who eventually beats this guy? You want to know who? L. A. Oh, get out of night. here! Yeah. He's got to be so happy the Rock's back. He's got so much material to steal, steal right now. Like he's like, please, I guarantee he's... the Rock's doing an L.A. Night cosplay. No, <sighs> you know, you ever hear that? <clears throat> and for people who are familiar, y'all will get this reference. But like, Carlos Mencia <laughs> was like, you know, he became super famous doing other people's jokes, and eventually got called out on it. His career oh, got ruined yeah. because of it. And he he's on recording, literally telling like not, like people not knowing that they were he was recording at the time and stuff, and in comedy clubs, and he would literally tell people like. You better watch out, bitch. If you're up on stage before me, I, you know I'm studying it. You know, you know I'm, you know I'm, I'm gonna make it mine. I mean, I'm gonna change the word this, this or that for Mexican. You know what I mean? Like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. and I'm gonna make money on it. And that's that's LA Knight, the back of the comedy club. Like he's he's back there just just taking notes. Oh man, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna take I, this. I used the Carlos Mencia. It was from South Park clip last night. Uh, We'll, we'll talk about yeah. Christian here in a second. With but, you know, he got kicked sticks. in the dick. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Christian got kicked in the dick so much. And I was like, Christian Cage after this night. It's the part where Carlos like, I got no dick, man. My dick don't work, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a great episode. That's the, the Kanye. The Kanye yeah, one. that's that's yeah. one of the best South Park episodes. <laughs> it's the Carlos and C.S. Yeah. That's like, I, I'm not funny, man. I just take everything. I just make it Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> People laugh. <laughs> Got no dick. Dick don't work, man. <laughs> that's so good. Yes. Yeah, that's that's LA Night. And listen, I I that's I, mean. I, no, listen, I I actually I've talked about it before. I've actually warmed up on LA Night a lot recently because I once he was no longer a threat to like being the one to beat Roman. I, the whole thing is like people it can't it couldn't be anyone but Cody for me, right? So like LA Knight started to catch some some traction, and I was like, this is a little bit threatening. I need to make sure we, you know stomp this out a little bit um but honestly i i'll, I'll say this at all honesty and I, I was i was you know i was being a little harsh about the mencia stuff because like, he does he does he, he when he cuts promos like i saw one the other week where he was doing like a backstage one and he was literally i mean i'm gonna botch it a bit but he was he was doing stuff like his cadence and everything was was exactly like stone cold steve austin and the rock mix it was like he was like, you think that LA Knight is gonna do this? Uh -uh. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, uh, yeah, but I'm like, this is, the, you know, with every it just it, everything was very like I have heard this, but I've heard exactly this before from other people. But what I appreciate about what he's doing, and I, I gotta respect this, he's he has heavily leaned into just being like that that guy, like that attitude era throwback wrestler of just catchphrases and being over the top and it, it's worked for him like he's still over you know he's not over to the degree he was like you know months ago i i would say but like he's still over as one of their top baby faces what he's doing is working and no one else is really doing that which is you know i don't think a lot of people would want to be like cosplaying other wrestlers but it's worked so well for him that i wouldn't stop doing it LA Knight should be Roman Reigns. That's where I'm at. Yeah, definitely not. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if you got anything else you want to uh, add to... You know who should truly beat Roman Reigns, and this will get into our next conversation a little bit. Seth Rollins should beat Roman Reigns. There's a real story there. There's real history there. Better than any history and story they got with Cody Rhodes. Seth has not lost to Roman Reigns. He actually has a win over Reigns because he won by DQ and Seth Rollins has a real story of where if he dethroned Roman Reigns, that would be a huge deal. I, I don't disagree. I think that, I mean, obviously I'm going to ride with Cody, but like everything you said is valid just then like Seth Rollins, <laughs> Seth Rollins has a history. Um, he didn't get, he, he technically beat Roman Reigns the last time they, they fought for the championship, even though it was uh, just, you know, by his qualification, but um, you know, obviously I want Cody to do it. And the, uh, let me ask you this. This is another time. 
do you think they should get rid of this? Like the rocks, like alluding to getting rid of the world championship. Yeah. I wish Seth would hit back at that because right now he's kind of, he's obviously feuding with drew, but he's also involved in the bloodline stuff, but he hasn't really addressed the rock saying multiple times. I'm going to get rid of that dumb title. You got, he's just kind of like, Nope, I'm going to keep defending it. Like I wish he'd, I wish he'd slap the rock. They're making Seth very secondary. And yeah, which I know is kind he is kind of secondary because like this wasn't the original plan. This tag team match, they kind of just they're like, oh shit, we gotta do something here. Let's do this. Um, but I wish he would fire back at the rock and be like, You're not taking this title. I'm defending this title more than your cousin ever has. Like, I'm showing up to work every single week, even when I was injured. I was showing up. I was on every show. You're not you're not taking this. So I wish he would fire back at Rock, but he's really not. Yeah. Yeah, it is. it's uh, kind of weird how he how he hasn't. But it also makes me think they're going to It's weird cuz they just, you know, created the title less than a year ago. But there's also no point in that title existing for a lot of reasons. And I've talked about that plenty before how I think whenever Cody beats Roman for the the Universal Championship they should just rename it the WWE championship again and then consolidate both world titles and Cody should just be on both shows. Like I think the world champion, especially if he's your new John Cena, like why not be on Raw and SmackDown? You know, and I think they should get rid of the entire brand split, but that's, that's once again, that's a whole other conversation. But like, I think, uh, I think Seth has been boxed out a little bit, been a little bit of an afterthought, unfortunately, but it's due to the circumstances, like you said. It was supposed to be him versus CM Punk. They had to completely change course. But I, I, do... I don't even think <clears throat> I don't even think it's so much that because they could have changed course with him and Drew. I think it's more the Rock stuff that forced them to to be inserted into that because then they had to figure out what they're doing with Rock if he wasn't going to face Roman, and they decided tag team match was the best idea because they could have just pivoted from Seth to Punk to Seth to Drew like they've done and everything been fine i think the the pivot was with the rock and so that put seth in this position that's actually that's you're right that's a good point um and and you know for what it's worth i think that seth rollins has obviously obviously done a really really good job and he's super over and he's always been great in the ring and as um i think a shock said it in the chat seth rollins is a made man which <clears throat> which is true regardless of if he wins or not like he's i think he's a WWE lifer unless something goes super wrong between him and the company somehow i think he's going to be in that company forever and he'll be involved as like an agent afterwards like he'll always be a wwe guy and that's great for him like i, I think he's he's had a hell of a career and especially after losing to cody three times in a row to bounce back and to be the inaugural world champion and then to have the run he's had with this title belt and stay not only stay as over as he was but continue to get more and more over where the the people singing his song and stuff it, it's is getting louder and louder and he always has great matches like i'm i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and like roast seth rollins i i i completely understand the line of thinking especially if people like for people who aren't cody rhodes fans especially like i i could definitely see them having a legitimate argument of like it shouldn't be cody it should be seth that's really the one person i think i would say I, i'm not gonna say i'm okay with because it should be cody but you, you guys know what i mean like i that makes sense if it was seth rollins based on everything that we just we just said now that said at wrestlemania drew mcintyre definitely needs to beat seth rollins though yeah, like I <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> i mean drew mcintyre i've said that plenty in recent weeks too outside of cody rhodes my favorite wrestler in the world is drew mcintyre right now i love this guy um the the social media trolling is absolutely next level i am i the the t-shirts and the everything he's doing i even when he roasts cody i'm still like yeah, there's, there's a little <laughs> truth to it because like the thing with the thing that's so funny to me about about drew mcintyre is everything he's saying i agree with like i he's just out there spitting facts and people are booing him because he's spitting facts about people that they like that they don't want to hear about like CM Punk, you know, so Drew McIntyre should win. And then you have this stupid briefcase that Damian Priest is carrying around that like at some point has got to get cashed in. Right. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> Do you think that, I mean, I think they're going to lose the tag team titles in that, in that ladder match, uh, Priest and Valor. 
I see. I think McIntyre should walk out of Mania with the title. So you do yeah. a failed cash in, or I don't think Seth should beat Drew and then Priest cash in. He's still got a couple of months, a few months actually. Like it's not until July. He doesn't have to do it at Mania. I think people are very married to the idea that it needs to be Mania. But he's he's not the guy who should be holding the title Agreed. right now. I I think Drew should be holding the title. You think he should, Drew should win at Mania? Like you think like he should cash in and lose Damian at this point? No, I I think you, he could just keep holding the briefcase. Honestly, like you don't have to make a decision on it. No, no, no I'm talking about even like in like June, like, do you think it's just like time has passed where it's like, like we got Cody with the belt. Like they don't even like, they got drew with the title and like drew still like red hot or they're going to consolidate the title. Do you think at some point they're just like, all right, Damien, like you're going to cash it in, but like, you're just not similar no, to because stand out. just not going to win it. June is in three months. You can heat up priest in that three months. You don't know what what's going to change right, in that right, three right, right. months. So, gotcha. you know, if you get to, you know, end of June, you haven't made a decision, then okay, fine. Maybe he just needs to, if it like, it's just not clicking fine. Maybe he just needs to lose. But right now you don't have to make a decision of like, Oh yeah, let's cash in and lose. Like you, you got time still. I would wait out as much time as possible. And if the right moment doesn't come along, sorry to Damian priest, the right moment's not coming along, but <laughs> you don't need to go ahead and undercut that by four months just because it's not here now. Like you still got time. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to throw that out there though. Like the possibility that maybe based on uh, where we're at with everything, maybe he just, when he does cash in, maybe he just doesn't win it. We've seen that happen before. It's super rare. I mean, it would be too straight at this <laughs> point. Like it happened last year with theory. So it could easily happen this year. He did it on the U.S. title, didn't he? Yeah. How stupid! What? What? A, I mean, listen. I I don't think that theory is great. I I I I understand. There's a lot of criticisms of the guy, and like and, uh, but <clears throat> to to his credit, they haven't done him a whole lot of favors either. Like, I mean, to cash yeah. in on the U.S. championship makes you look so lame. Just that alone is like. Who, why would you ever do that? And then, like, well, then he won the US title, and it like it kind of made sense at the time because, like, it did give him that edge that people thought he needed. So, and then, you know, he did win the title shortly after that, and like, that was all fine. It was just they didn't do anything, they had him beat John Cena for some reason, and then they went nowhere after that. Right. And I've never been high on theory anyway, right? Right. But I'm just saying, like, that's none of those things are really his fault outside of like, if they just didn't like his performances and like, that's why he got deep push, which, you know, I, I get that too. But like, my point is for you to win the money in the bank, no matter who you are, like how lame would it look for Damian priest to, to after all this time that he cashes in on the intercontinental championship. Well, actually against Gunther, that's actually not that bad of an idea. Yeah. Against Gunther, like against Gunther, that's actually like that. Maybe they should do that. Actually. I don't even think it's terrible if it's, logan paul like i mean logan paul at least got some pretty high cachet with just all yeah outside following well maybe dude maybe the move is like randy orton like wins the u.s title at wrestlemania in that triple threat and then damian priest cashes in on him or something like they they should find they really should even though i just totally <clears throat> i'll put it this way i think it's it's lamer to cash in for the world title and lose than it is to cash in successfully for the United States championship. If that makes sense. Like I think Damian priest comes off better if he just cashes in and wins the U S title. than if he cashes in and just doesn't win the world title, I'm with you. Maybe they should do that. Cause that keeps him out of, because he's he's like tenth guy down the list at this point of like who you would want to see with the world championship. You know what I mean? Like it's not even once again, it's not even really his fault. It's just where they're at with the stories, and he's been the tag team champion, and all these other people have have, have just have leapfrogged in people. You know his interest. That's what I would do. I'm going to throw that out there. I think they need to pivot and have Damian win one of the mid card titles with that briefcase, and that keep, just keep him out of the Cody, Roman, Seth, Drew stuff. And then maybe after a good run with the U.S. title, he you know gets a shot at the world title or something. 
Bluey sends us a super chat. It says, all the builds on the Raw side are so strong. Becky and Rhea, better in finding confidence to take on the next generation. Sammy reinventing his style to face Gunther. Seth and Drew, dynamic stories with real depth. I agree. Like I like everything they're doing. I'm on enjoying Raw. it. I do, I do think that Sammy Zayn needs a pep talk from somebody on the Raw side. I, I, I said this yesterday on In the Weeds. I need Jey Uso to like remind Sammy how good he is. Because right now, Gable is trying to tell him like you know you're not good enough to beat gunther he's got a counter for everything and sammy's like kind of having that doubt i need jay uso to come in there and be like nah dog like you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with roman reigns you may have won that match if it wasn't for i think me <laughs> i cost you my bad uh i need, I need somebody to, to come in and give sammy that pep talk yeah i'm with you we can move on though i know we got other topics we got to get to but um I'm very excited for the for WrestleMania where we're at with everything. And I, I like Bluey said, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying Raw. I've been watching it most weeks recently, which has been a change for me in recent years. So yeah. All right. Here we go. AEW. Uh over a million fans, uh, and a great number in the demo tuned in. And it was a great show. And I think it's been a run of great shows. We got two new champions in AEW coming out of Dynamite last night. We got Kazuchika Okada winning the AW Continental Championship, just the Continental Championship, not the ROH title, not the New Japan Strong title, just the Continental Championship from Eddie Kingston. And then Adam Copeland won the AW TNT Championship from Christian Cage in an I Quit match. Jensen, thoughts on the matches? Thoughts on the new champions? Yeah, so, I mean, I like both matches. Um, first off, well, we're going to talk a little bit more about Eddie Kingston here in a minute as well with another topic, but... I'll start with that though. <clears throat> I, I, for one, I was confused about how the Continental Crown Championship even worked. I guess up until wow. last night. They, huh? it's so are they. Yeah, because now I will say I started considering what was going on when one of our other topics this week is is that Eddie Kingston and and Mark Briscoe has been announced for Supercard of Honor for the Ring of Honor world title. And once that was announced, that's when I started realizing like, well, if that's specifically for the ROH title, and then it was like announced, oh yeah, and, and Okada and, and Kingston for the Continental title. I was like, obviously, like, you know what I mean? I started putting it together then. I was like, oh, these titles are actually all technically separate. Like I knew that- Well, they I don't think they were supposed to be. Right, but, they, but that's where we're at now, which is- kind of it is kind of weird because yeah like i think i think we were all confused as to how this was working um that said okada beating kingston for the continental championship i mean i think we all saw that coming right like yeah so um good for him <laughs> the only reservation i have at all is like the continental championship i like it so far i liked the tournament i liked kingston with the title Okada, I think we'll bring it to that next level. But you have that title, you have the international title, you have the TNT title, you have all these like quote unquote mid card titles. I know they're going to try to position Okada's continental title. I feel like they're going to try to position that as like as close to the world championship as they can with the way they're presenting him is like a big deal. But I <clears throat> I like that he was the one to beat Kingston. I mean, I, I have no problem with that. It's pretty wild that we're even getting Okada versus Kingston in an AEW ring at all when you really think about it. But I thought the match was good um and uh I, I like the celebration afterwards you know they showed the young bucks in the back with tony and like and tony like didn't you know it's interesting because you i try to pick up on like tony's you know body language and stuff facial expression during that and like he seems to still be like pretty buddy buddy with the bucks and even in canon because he wasn't like he wasn't like booing it you know what i mean he was kind of like congratulations guys you know what i mean like it's not a heel it's just you know. right right but it's like i i just think that's interesting they, they showed tony next to him and obviously that the whole thing is that they're the evps and they're that's how much influence they have on what's going on they're right there backstage right next to the right next to tony khan on you know, on the monitors with the headsets on like during the match so obviously they're heavily influencing things on the show that's the whole point but but yeah, how did you how did you feel about this about Okada beating Kingston for this title? I know you were really big on Kingston like winning the title to begin with. Yeah, once they decided they were going to make it 
three separate things. And I see people in the chat saying, you know, it's just supposed to be for the Continental Crown. And then Eddie decided, well, let me put the ROH title and the New Japan title on the line as well. The way they were acting, they made it seem like it was going to be all three were going to be defended. I mean, when Eddie faced Danielson, they they called it the Continental Crown. It wasn't just the Continental Championship. It was right. all three titles on the line. And then they differentiated it here, I think, because you know, reasons. Uh, I, th- I think it was probably always going to end up this way. I don't think it was always going to be, hey, let's do three. All three titles are just going with whoever wins because you get New Japan involved. The ROH, like the champions don't appear really on ROH. No offense to ROH, but like Okada wasn't going to be wrestling on ROH television. Just, it wasn't going to happen. So it was probably always going to end up splitting them. I, I don't like that it wasn't fully established there. Again, I, I understand, Andrew. He said, so this was after, it was after Eddie added the other two before it was just the one, the initial announcement was just, I, I know. But again, Eddie and Danielson was just going to be for the one. They made it, they didn't do a great job of fully differentiating it to, to start. It was a little off, off balance, but I, I think splitting it was probably always going to be the move. I like that Okada has the title now. Now I just wonder what the title is in, in like the AEW sphere. Cause you got the TNT title, which Copeland won. You got the international title. So you've got three kind of, and now the continental title, you've got three kind of secondary championships now and, and of course you still have the the world title on top of that so you know do you need three secondary titles no nope. i know most companies have have the one the one and you have it between two brands and everything like like wwe i should i shouldn't say most companies it's it's wwe um you have the one secondary title each with a brand AEW doesn't have a brand split so these titles can be on both brands now you got three of them like is that overkill no it depends on how you're gonna book these titles i think the international title has been dropped in value a little bit after orange's first run and then the the stuff with moxley and un- unfortunately moxley getting hurt phoenix back to orange now it's on roddy and then um and you got the tnt title which still feels like a big deal I don't know how often Copeland's going to defend it. I don't know if Copeland's a long-term champion. Okada having this title makes it feel like a big deal. Now it's just a matter of, okay, now just book it strong. Oh, yeah, there's Hook as well. I don't really count. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they do. I mean, it's an unrecognized title or an unsanctioned title, but they totally recognize it and have FTW title matches. So, like, that is another one that I do think it's, it's fair to bring that up, too. And the I've said this before on the show, but, like, take the continental championship and then take the international championship. Well, actually first t- take the international championship, put it next to the continental champ- championship. What do you get? Jeremy? What do we do? Your when you, when continental you... championship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you have two intercontinental championships, basically like just, you don't need, you don't need all this. I like the AEW better title wise when it was just the world title, the TNT title. You had the, the women's world title. They eventually had the the women's TBS title that I think did wonders for Jade Cargill. You had the you know the tag titles, and that was it. Um, you know you can well, add a need title to bring here. Back rankings as well. <laughs> no, I mean I think that worked for a while for what it needed to, but then it 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 becomes convoluted and you start pigeonholing yourself from like being able to do certain matches because you got to get people up in the rankings and stuff. But, um, but yeah, I just. I'm, I'm totally with you. And then when it comes to the, uh, the TNT title and, and uh, I keep wanting to call him edge Copeland sex and hard castle, him defeating uh Christian cage for the TNT championship. Um, I thought it was a pretty badass match. Those guys really went after it. And I mean, especially with like the ages that those guys are and all the miles they have on their bodies to go out there and still put on a performance like that and still incorporate ladders and, and everything that they did. Um, as a little Giants fan, them referring to Spike over and over was always funny to me because, like, you know, I just think of Spike from the Little Giants. The only way to to combat Spike would be with an ice box, and Christian 
did not have an yeah, ice box. Yeah, he screwed up. So, That's what he should have brought with him. Um, but uh, I like the finish too because <laughs> he gets hit low and that with Spike, and then like as Copeland's going in for the headshot, he's just like, "I'm done. I quit. I quit. I quit." You know, it, which is like a coward move, which is the point. You know, um, do you think this is really it between the two of them? <laughs> I mean, for now, it should be. Like, I don't know what you go on after this. Like, Copeland won. He can now defend the title against whoever he's going to defend the title to, against. Christian, I assume, maybe will feud with Kill Switch, And then I would like to see, like, a Christian and, like, Nick Wayne actual tag team. I think they could be very fun. And, you know, right now they're obviously aligned, but they don't really, like, there's, they've done a couple of like six mans together, but we haven't had like a traditional Christian Cage teams with Nick Wayne, have we? Like I'll, I'll look this up right I fast, but so. I don't recall them like actually teaming together in just a two on two match. Uh, I think it's always been with Kill Switch. Um, yeah, and that, that's uh, yeah, they've done two matches, two six man tags. I would like to see them like do an actual like kind of tag team between them. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Um, Ashok mentioning Copeland feuding with Daniel Garcia. That's the one thing I didn't fully, I understood it in the sense that like, Oh, Garcia doesn't like Christian Christian cost Christian, Nick Wayne. They lost, uh, you know, interfered at revolution and everything. But Garcia doesn't like Copeland either. Garcia like stepped to Copeland and is like, you know, let's fight each other to see who earns the right to face Christian. That ended in no, that ended in a, a no contest. Garcia got the match because Copeland was, uh, injured or not cleared or what uh whatever the explanation was I'm pretty sure it was not cleared and then you know then they did the 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 I quit match last night but like I don't feel like Garcia should fully like Copeland to where he's like happy that Adam Copeland is the champion now I'd still like to see like Garcia target Copeland and go after the title and a Andrew saying I see next promo Copeland says thanks for the help here's a title shot I don't want Gar like Garcia's got to win, and I don't need Garcia losing back to back TNT title matches. I think he, I think he should be the champion. So that's the one thing that I was like, I understood it, but because I want Garcia to be, um, because I want Garcia to be the champion, I was like, eh, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of it, even though I understood where they were coming from. Yeah, I. I could see that though, Garcia and Ed, because Garcia was also with Edge like backstage when they were celebrating uh, last yeah. night on Rampage and stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Corey Michaels mentions uh, awesome that Edge and Christian helped revive the TNT Championship. The work Christian put in with this run puts him ahead of Darby and Miro. To be honest, uh, well, I th it's in, in a different way, I, I understand what Corey's saying because the, I think the title just meant something more when Darby and Miro had it like initially towards the beginning of AEW when the title, when there was less just actual yeah. championships to win. But I think Christian deserves a ton of credit for taking the title when it became essentially irrelevant after like all the Wardlow and Wardlow and Joe going back and forth and all that stuff. Like once, once people stopped caring about the TNT championship and they put it on Christian, I think Christian did a really good job of making people care about something that people stopped caring about. If that makes sense. I, I think it's easy to forget Miro's run, but that was a big deal when he won it. And yeah. then I it was think a big it's... jump from WWE at the time too. Like yeah. to get him. Yeah. Yeah. And then Darby as well. Like Darby, Darby's run was like really top tier yeah. stuff. Like that really put Darby on the map. I do think Christian, Christian helped after, cause there was all the stuff with, you know, Sammy won it because Cody was leaving and everything and then the joe ward low as you mentioned back and forth like christian helped re-establish it yes. um but yeah with the early reigns with like darby obviously cody's uh reign and then darby and then miro like that was still really good <laughs> stuff um yeah but yeah i mean miro yeah miro's first run was great i mean miro hasn't been on television since world's in so he's just yeah. he's around somewhere maybe i don't know yeah in Bulgaria, apparently, again, from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, he went back to Bulgaria after him and uh, CJ Lana split. Um, is, she a, is she a swerve? I see like all the stuff with social media between them. I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I mean, I just, I, I, none of us, I guess, would really know. I just, 
I, that was just an observation. I just recently realized like the last few times I've seen anything with her, like her and her have been together, but Hey, they could just be buddies or like doing the same media yeah. or whatever. I mean, I don't want to speculate. I just, I just want to put it out. I guess I probably shouldn't even put it out there, but it was an observation I made that I've been seeing the two of them on like social media together. So. Shites on Spurs saying, anyone else feel like this eventually leading to Shibata Okada at either Double or Nothing or Forbidden Door? <clears throat> Forbidden Door match at Forbidden Door makes sense. I can see that. I do like one thing I uh, like about what AEW's been doing recently is like Tony, he's always had a great roster. Last year, they were doing a bunch of different stuff that, you know, the feeling was lost. Um, but this year, they clearly realize that. Hey, we got a really great roster. Let's just do like cool matches. Like they're doing Swerve and Takeshka and Osprey and Shibata next week. It's yeah. like, all right, awesome. You know, they just did Danielson and Shibata. You got really good wrestlers. Go ahead and just do these matches. Okada's wrestling weekly on television. Like they just went ahead and did Okada and Kingston. They didn't wait for Forbidden Door or wait for sorry, double or nothing's the next pay per view. I mean, that's oh, I guess Dynasty is now the next pay per view. Um but like they're not waiting to do some of this stuff. It's just like, let's just go ahead and do these matches. Let's do them on television. You know, like you can you can just do that. Last year I thought Tony was too let's hold off on big matches. Let's not give so much away on TV. And this year, I think starting with the Continental Classic, you realize like, yeah, let's just do cool matches. Now you gotta the balance becomes like not having guys lose too much. Cause I assume Takeshi is going to lose to swerve. He's already lost to Osprey. You can't get, keep making these people just like losers on television and kind of the same thing with Shabbat is like, I know he did win last night on the rampage against uh KM Kevin Matthews in a quick match, but you can't like just tell every, tell the audience like, Hey, every time these guys are in a big match, they're going to lose. They're only going to beat sort of nobodies. You gotta, yeah. you gotta find a balance there. Well, I think it depends on how often, how active they are, because like it's okay. I understand what you're saying. I think you need to pay, it, be aware of that. But I think that if they're wrestling like every week or every other week, and like they lose a couple, you know, like Takesha loses to Osprey, Takesha loses to uh, to Swerve, but then like the next like five times we see him, he's beating like, and he won last you know, night. Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying, uh, yeah, yeah, he did Takesha and uh, and um. Shibata. Uh, Shibata both did. Yeah, they both so, won last night. Um, but yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, though, too. Um, and I mean, and that, to your point, you know, I've said it a thousand times, uh, you know, Cody versus Sting. We never got it because they were holding off and they shouldn't have held off. Like, just like, give us, give us, give us stuff while we have the opportunity. Don't let people get injured and let contracts last, lapse and that kind of stuff. Also, just really quickly, I'll mention, and I agree with this, um, there was a comment uh i don't know i missed who sent it but somebody had said something about um tk is done booking people he doesn't trust is yeah i think jeff like. driver said that and i i agree with that i think that that's accurate i think that's i think that's really accurate i think at this point the roster is so stacked that he's probably got the mindset of like if you don't really want to be here if you're complaining about this or that if you don't want to get beaten like you're, you're complaining about taking losses or you talking about going back to the WWE or whatever it is, whoever I'm not singling anybody specific out, but if you're in that camp or in that boat of, of people, Tony just doesn't need that anymore. Like, okay, see ya. Like, I'm not going to book you and then I'll release you when your contract's up. You can go do whatever you want. Like, we'll, like look at the roster they have. He does, he, to be fair, he doesn't really have to put up with that at this point. You know what I mean? And Jeff Elliott, I was saying counter argument. Do you want to see top guys, top guys, if that's the case, someone needs to lose. And I agree. And I, again, I'm glad that he's doing these matches. You just got to be careful about the the balance of things. You can't run Takeshka out there and have him lose every single big match because then people are just like, okay, well then Takeshka, even though he's beating you know no names and everything, we know every time. Oh, Takeshka is facing Brian Danielson. Well, Brian Danielson will fucking lose to everybody. So maybe that's a bad example. Um, it is a tough balance. I'm not saying this is an easy job. By the way, I'm not saying it's a really good problem to have, by the way, because we're getting top tier talents in in actual one on one matches with actual winners and losers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so at the end of the day, someone's got to lose. But like like we've been saying, if you if you if that person loses, but then like, you know, they get some wins after that. There's a way there's a way you can work around these things and you can have a beat on top. 
and this is where you've all you just also <clears throat> got to like establish kind of a hierarchy. You can have him beat. You can have Takeshka beat Penta. No, no knock on Penta. I got nothing against him, but like he's a pretty well established guy who has some cachet with the fans. Former tag team champion and everything. Like if he beats Penta, cool. Like you can give him wins over guys who aren't very clearly low established guys who lose every every single time yeah losses don't mean you're buried the follow-up is is what you really need here because guys can win and be buried as we've seen with a few people on the roster the thing with the Kestra that he has unique to him specifically though is that he has those wins over kenny omega like so if you keep if you keep that into yeah, account, the follow-up to that wasn't good though i know i agree the fall wasn't good but like if you keep that in mind of like yeah he lost osprey yeah he's probably gonna lose his score but it's like but i mean he, beat, he still beat like he beat kenny you know what I mean? Like he's still like, he's still that level, you know? Anyway, I know we got to move on to other topics, <clears throat> but, and one of them ties in with Eddie Kingston. If you want to go right into that one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We can, we can do our other spotlight. Our product is what it is. We're going straight up the middle. Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe, ROH Supercard of Honor. That's right. Eddie Kingston is part of ROH. You might not know it if you don't watch television, Um, but Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe. You know, it seemed like we were going to get this match. We we're supposed to get it last year, and then Mark got hurt. And now Mark's obviously back, and they're, they're going to do this at Supercard. Yes, and the reason I wanted to bring this up was my spotlight is for two reasons. One, because of what you just mentioned, how it was supposed to happen last year, and Kingston wound up winning the championship. Was it already a year ago that he won the title? At Super- uh, no, he didn't win it at Supercard last year. <clears throat> he, he won it a little bit later uh, in the year from what i recall my timelines yeah very but, but bad, mark but, but mark was like encouraging eddie to take the title shot i remember yeah like because eddie, eddie wanted eddie won it on a dynamite anyway he didn't even win it on an roh show he <laughs> won it on one of the that's right dynamite. that's right he lost that's right i forgot because claudia was the, that's right yeah um but <clears throat> regardless i guess my point, grand slam he won a dynamite grand slam that's that's the one it was thank, thank you i um but so he, this has been like a year in the making. Well, it's really been like decades in the making. Mark Briscoe becoming the Ring of Honor World Champion. Last year, there was a really good chance he was he was going to pull it off. It felt like. Um, do you think that Mark Briscoe beats Eddie Kingston for this thing at Supercard this year? I don't know because I don't think this is going to headline. I think Sheeta and Athena is going to headline. I'm no knock on Eddie and Mark. Like it, it should be a great match. I think Sheeta and Athena should headline. I I'm looking forward to that match more, honestly. Like at least Athena's on television. There, she's you know she is the face of ROH to me. Eddie Kingston's not really on that show. He certainly doesn't wrestle on that show. He sometimes cuts promos. Eddie Kingston last time that he wrestled on ROH television was December against Anthony Henry. It was final battle. And that was a throw together match last minute because he was part of the Continental Classic. So that was that was the last time he's been on the show. I'm way more excited for Athena and Sheeta. I think Sheeta could be the one to beat Athena. I don't think I could see Mark winning, but I could also see them having Kingston win this one and then running it back and actually doing maybe a little bit better of a build to for uh the the july show whatever the the next show is for them i could see i could see that and i i i agree about Sheeta and athena i think that there's a good chance that they'll main event that'll be a really good match i really thought that billy stark should have beat athena um but at the same time they've done a good job with like billy stars is i think pretty clearly going to be the tv champion then they'll build her to the main title but um <clears throat> but yeah i mean I, I'm leaning towards Mark getting the job done this year, but I think it's been a good match. Just wanted to bring that up that, that we are finally going to get Mark Briscoe, you know, challenging for this world title at Supercard of Honor. I know he challenged for the title before, but I feel like he's got a good shot at winning it this year. Yeah. What do you think about Athena and Sheeta? Do you think <clears throat> Sheeta's the one to finally end Athena's reign? I would keep it on Athena a little longer. Although I, I don't yeah, I, I but the, the problem is like then who like who eventually beats her, right? Um <clears throat> I, I do think that uh, it's going to be a good match. And I would not have a problem with Sheeta winning, just for the record. I think she's just super talented. She was a great AEW Women's World Champion. You know, 
I do think that they need to figure a way though pretty fast to like get Athena just on AEW regularly. Like it's kind of weird that we haven't been getting that. But I like I like people who are like already specific to that, that brand. I like the idea of that, but Athena's too talented not to be on AEW television. So well, that's what makes Athena actually special on ROH is she's not just taking losses in tag team matches like Kyle Fletcher right. or, <laughs> right. you know, losing to look, there's no shame in losing to Okada, but Kingston, your ROH champion is just losing to Okada. Kyle Fletcher is in these tag team matches or he's just losing to Osprey. There's no shame in losing these matches, but it's not the best. Like, I've said for years that uh, I shouldn't say years because ROH that Tony's had ROH for about two years now that like <clears throat> just have ROH specific people on ROH and make it the it's tough to make it a super indie because AEW is a not for all into not now but when it certainly when it first started it was like the national television super indie um but there's just got to be a better way to to differentiate <laughs> it you know you got the Bullet Club, they're never going to be on ROH TV. No. Like, they're just not. <clears throat> yeah. Other, what was our other, other topic this? Oh, yeah. Motor City. That's yeah. Big, Motor City Machine yeah. Guns possibly uh, ending their time with TNA. Their contracts are reportedly up. Um, you know, we don't know if they're going to re sign if they go elsewhere. What, what do you think of Motor City potentially being free agents? And where would you like to see them next? I mean, they would be an asset anywhere as singles performers and as tag team guys. You get you get the best of both worlds with both of them, and they're both so well established. What's that? You said best of both worlds, Hannah Montana. <laughs> um, I uh, I think per well, I think they'd make the. How do you say this? If they were to go to AEW, they'd immediately be like maybe the tag team champions they'd be highlighted as like main event people on the show probably like that audience and everything there's a lot of overlap there and i could even see shelly and saban challenging for like the world championship and stuff like fairly soon if they went to to, to um to aw but there is a there is a part of me that really would like to see what they look like in the wwe system like especially with how like the the overall talent in wwe people are like you know they're smaller than they were back in the past like you know you don't have to be six foot five and, and a muscle bound giant anymore and i think that shelly and saban would fit in really well with like the current landscape of the wwe roster and obviously they wouldn't need to go to nxt but like if you wanted them on nxt for a second to just like tear it up for like a couple months or something with some of that roster and then you know on raw or smackdown i think they would immediately be like them versus like diy you know what i mean like right away just like put that on tv and just let the guy let just let them let them cook you know what i mean like so I think that, uh, I think uh, personally speaking, I know this might sound kind of crazy. I'd like to see them in WWE because it just seems so foreign. Like we did, we did, we have not seen anything like that from the two of them. And they've dabbled with AEW a little bit. And obviously they've been on the Indies and Impact and New Japan and Ring of Honor and everything forever. So I'd like to see them in the WWE. I think they, I'm with you. They'd be an asset anywhere they go. WWE, I, I always like to see how talent would look in an environment where I'm not so certain how they would look. AEW, I generally know how they would look, but I do think this AEW is different from the AEW if they had joined like two years ago. They did do that one-off match uh, in, in AEW yeah. uh, a few years ago, but now like the tag division in AEW is a little bit weird. I mean, we haven't. We don't have champions right now. I know they're doing a tournament. The Young Bucks, I think, are really trying to, to restore things there with this. But, like, you know, Sting and Darby had the titles, and that was a good send-off for Sting. But it didn't lead to a whole lot of anything. It was just the it was the Sting match, and that's all it needed to be. But it didn't, like, do wonders for the division. Ricky and Bill, very afterthought champions. I mean, their, their story was just Don Callis family stuff. So I do... I hope they're re going to rebuild the tag team division. And I think Motor City would be kind of a good part of that. I also think there's more singles possibilities for Shelly and Saban in AEW compared to WWE. Um, but I do wonder what they would look like in WWE if they stick around at NXT, if they go up to main roster, do stuff there. I also think that uh, there's a possibility of you know them working as coach producer roles in 
WWE, if that's something they would be interested in. So I, I would be very interested to see what they look like in WWE. And Shelly was, uh, you know, Shelly was NXT there in the, yeah, in NXT <laughs> for uh, a cup of coffee. So yeah, we'll see. I, my guess, I always think like people are just going to stick with where they know. Um, but it feels like they've done everything in TNA. So I just don't, I just don't know what they, what else there is to do for them. In they've TNA. done everything as singles guys and tag guys. I mean, like there's literally yeah. nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I'd like the LA team in the WWE. I think that'd be pretty sick. Or AEW. Either yeah. either would be great. All right. Andy Spotlight. I'm gonna give a big motherfucking shout out. Shayna Baszler coming to GCW Bloodsport. This was out of kind of out of left field, but also makes a lot of sense just because Baszler and Barnett's relationship. And it's another signal that hey, WWE is willing to be a little bit nice when it's probably not gonna hurt hurt them sir well nothing's gonna hurt the wwe at this point and, and if you want like my some deep thoughts on this and uh, on my other the other indies probably in case i run out of time to clock in for the shoot job i talk for like probably close to, like a half hour about this and the other indie spotlight over on the weekender so check that out over on fightful select this past episode i talk a lot about this but <clears throat> excuse me but i uh so with Shanna doing GCW blood sport, cause obviously it is a GCW branded show. WWE really should get involved with more stuff like this. Cause obviously like, it's not going to hurt the WWE ever to like help little indie, well, actually have little indie promotions like GCW, but really any indie promotion, the WWE is such a worldwide conglomerate, like GCW catching more steam is not going to hurt the WWE. It can only help WWE. I think when you put, some of your talent on some of these shows because there's a lot of people that watch gcw that don't watch the wwe anymore they just they've been totally jaded by it they don't care about it they see shanna baszler and she comes in and she kicks some ass maybe they're like hey i like shanna you know what i'm gonna check a wrestlemania match out or whatever you know what i mean like i i think it's smart for the wwe especially for talents they're not doing anything with they have plenty of people on that roster and what and also people that are like at the performance center or on like nxt level up or whatever that they could get the reps in in front of real crowds, it, which is different. I mean, I, I, I like that they get the reps in in front of like the the um, like the sound studio crowd that they do like level up in and stuff. But like, you know, it's different when you go out onto the indies and get like real crowd reactions from a different type of fan base and stuff. I think you can learn a lot in those settings. So I love that Shane is doing this. She has the tie-ins with Josh Barnett. She was trained by Josh Barnett. She has a legitimate MMA background. She's competed in the UFC. She's competed on Raw Underground. People forget that. Um, but uh, but I think that Shayna doing this also opens the door for potentially more WWE people getting opportunities to do maybe some stuff with GCW. And what's also super interesting is that AEW talents do GCW blood sport as well, like Marina Shafir. So like you could potentially have a scenario where you have a WWE wrestler versus an AEW wrestler on a GCW show, like how we had Taz versus Mike awesome, like WCW versus WWF on an ECW show back in the day and stuff. So I just think it's kind of cool. And then in a roundabout way, WWE and AEW are kind of sort of loosely working with one another. Like, I don't think that like people in the WWE are like talking directly to Tony Khan, but like through Brett Lauderdale and GCW, people from both of those rosters are having to work together. Even if they're not in the same matches, they're in the same locker room. They're working on the same show that's being televised out to the world. I just feel like it just kind of opens the door up a lot more for a lot more possibilities and a lot more open-mindedness. And I love knowing that Triple H is okay with the idea of these things happening. And we've seen it with Charlie Dempsey and all Japan. We've seen it with you know, Nakamura and Noah and stuff like that. But like, this is really cool to see Shayna Baszler being able to compete at Bloodsport. This is badass. Yeah, um, she's facing Masha Slamovich. Uh, and look, we know Shayna has a legit background. She was in the UFC. She's an MMA fighter. It, it's really, it's good for WWE. It's good for GCW. It doesn't hurt WWE at all. And it shows that they're willing to play with, with some of these companies, which I think in the end is a is a good faith move that obviously like they're not going to take any L's from. Nobody's going to be like, oh, uh, you know, this GCW is going to catch WWE 
because of that like everyone knows yeah. that's not the case so i do think it's a it's a smart move by all parties and then uh paul walter hauser and matt cardona <laughs> from wrestling revolver what'd you think of this match yeah so i'll get some quick thoughts on this and then i gotta bounce and clock in for the shoot job um i did not know paul walter hauser at all uh prior to this outside of i know he did like that award speech where he brought up wrestling um i don't know any of his movies or his tv shows um but i watched this match he put in a ton of effort. He won the match. Bully Ray came out and lit a table on fire. And Paul did a flaming uh, a flaming power bomb to, uh, to Matt Cardona to win the match. And I really respected his speech after. He basically said that, you know, when he did his um, Emmy Award speech, he was like, he's like, I didn't bring up a lot of people from Hollywood. I brought up wrestlers. He's like, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm one of you guys. I've always been one of you guys. He's actually going to be wrestling Sammy Callahan in his next match. Um, at Revolver, um, so they've already set that up, and I think it's really cool because he he said like no matter how big I get in Hollywood, no matter how successful any of my shows or movies are, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm gonna do what I can to contribute to give back to you guys as wrestling fans. And he said that 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 match was the most um, <clears throat> was the best live crowd he's ever performed in front of. And I know that like TV and movies and stuff, he's probably not really in front of like live people, but I'd imagine on his come up, he probably had to do a lot of theater and stuff like in front of other live crowds and stuff when he was really like, you know, getting, getting going in his career. So for him to say this was like his favorite live crowd too, was this wrestling crowd. That's pretty cool also. So he's a guy you can tell really respected what he was doing. He really respects wrestling. Um, and he's the kind of guy who is so successful that he doesn't have to do this at all. And not only did he not have to do it at all, he definitely didn't have to do like a death match type, like or a hardcore match or whatever type match. Like he, he didn't have to do anything. And that's why I, I respect guys like Bad Bunny and stuff so much. Like these guys who are like super famous, super successful and super rich already. And you're going to go that extra that extra mile. Not to just show up. Paul could have just shown up in the front row and they could advertise he's going to be at the event. He showed up and he went hard out there in the ring and, uh, and really showed his appreciation for the wrestling fans after. So... I didn't know him going into the match, but I came out a fan of this guy um, and I respect him. So, yeah, that, that, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great match. You know, Hauser had wrestled uh, Matthew Palmer, Athena's husband, before on a Revolver show last year. It was the oh, same right, show right, that right. Uh, Ronda Rousey wrestled on as well. Um, I listened to his interview with Chris Van Vliet. Like he, Hauser, I'm talking about, uh, he's very respectful to the wrestling business and like understands of like, he, he didn't say like paying dues, but like just respecting the craft because he knows like nobody just walks in there, gets a match against Matt Cardona in their second match. Just how Bad Bunny doesn't walk in there, get a WrestleMania match in his first match. Like, but if you put in the time, the effort and the respect, like people understand that more and are more willing to accept that than just here's random celebrity. A, why is he getting this big match? Yes, I completely agree. If you want to continue, if you want to elaborate more on that, feel free. I got to clock in for work like right now. Follow me on X, everybody, Fight Talk underscore. And please, Jeremy, let everybody know how they can win a new copy of this Jack's Classic Superstars book that we're going to have this interview for. Good seeing you, Jeremy. Good seeing the chat. I had a clock in for the shoot job. Thank you, as always, Jensen. Uh, guys, Jensen will be back next week with uh, more more insight to the great, the great world of professional wrestling. All right, let's get into our interview with Jeremy Padauer from Jazzwares and Kyle Peterson, top tier collector who wrote the book, Jack Superstars, classic superstars, collectible, the uh, collector's guide. It's like a 700 page book that is now on Amazon. The links are below if you would like to check out the book or if you'd like to win a copy of the book. All right, everybody, let's get into it. Here we go. Jeremy Padauer. Oh, should I should probably load this up. All right. All right, here we go. Jeremy Padauer, Kyle Peterson in the Creator Spotlight. Welcome to the Creator Spotlight here on the Spotlight on Fightful. I am Steven Jensen, joined as always by Jeremy Lambert. And our guests, plural guests today, are two of the coolest people on earth. I'm super excited for this interview today. Um, starting off, we have the CBO, the Chief Brand Officer of Jazzwares, who produces stuff from Pokemon to the Squishmallows to you know to Halo, and of course. AEW. I've got a lot of his product signed behind me in this backdrop. So I'm a very big fan of the AEW line. And we had some big AEW news today also that I definitely want to talk to you about. Um, that, of course, being Jeremy Padauer. So thank you, Jeremy, for joining the show once again. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. It's so good to see you guys. 
Yes. Yes. Appreciate Thank you. you very much. Appreciate you coming back for, for a second round with us. Anytime. You can call me back anytime. Tomorrow, I'll be back. <laughs> yes, yes. And both of our guests today, Jeremy and our other guest, Kyle Peterson, are both returning guests of the show. And Kyle is here today promoting a book that recently came out. It is The Complete Guide to Jack's Classic Superstars. It is forwarded by Jeremy Pidauer. And Kyle is, in my, my honest opinion, the most impressive toy collector I know about. So... I have two legends here on the screen with me as an action figure collector myself. Kyle, how are you doing today, man? Thanks for coming back to the show. I appreciate you guys having me on. It's like a family reunion. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, I wanted to start off just right off the bat, Kyle, because this book came out this week. It's a really big deal. I, mean, I know you worked on it a long time, and I know Jeremy forwarded it. And I know that y'all's, you know, there it is right there. You, your your history, you were a longtime fan of Jeremy's as a fan of this toy line. What was it like putting this book together and the reception you've gotten so far about it? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's been amazing reception so far. I mean, it, it just worked out perfectly to be the 20 year anniversary. I mean, it just seems crazy. I'm sure it seemed crazy to Jeremy that it was 20 years ago this line started, but uh, just a lot of memories, a lot of fun. I mean, it's been a great ride uh, over the last year or so. And I mean, meeting Jeremy finally. I mean, I could talk about that too. It was one of my lifelong goals as weird as Jeremy's because that's one of the weirdest things ever, but it's true. So it's been a really good process across the board. Well, yeah. we talked last time to Jeremy about, you know, him creating and, and, and everything he did with jazz classic superstars and how important it was to the toy industry. And especially with, with professional wrestling action figures. Um, what was it like being a part of this book and having Kyle and y'all you know, collaborate on this, Jeremy? You know, it's it's an honor, honestly. You know, I have to say, uh, when I started the toy industry uh, about 25 years ago, it was a different time. Um, while I was utilizing the internet, um, it was still relatively in its infancy. And um, there wasn't a lot of cataloging who'd done what. So loosely, it was understood that Jack Friedman worked in LJN. Loosely, it was understood uh, that there was a history of wrestling figures. But there wasn't a full, real chronological understanding. And so when Kyle took the time to do this, it, it just And uh, it was it's an amazing experience. I mean, we can revisit some of the the old days uh, in creating that line and how it came to inception and all of that. But Kyle's covering it today means that, 50 years from now, people will be thumbing through that book and remembering things that happened. Uh, you guys will still be alive. I'll be, I'll be, uh, I won't. <laughs> I'll put that out that'll there. Be <laughs> great. <laughs> and you know, I, I owe you guys actually a little bit of meeting Jeremy because I met Jeremy at San Diego Comic Con last year. And Jeremy, I don't know if you remember this or not. It's probably a blur of San Diego Comic Con, but you said oh, I remember it just 100%. mentioned. Yeah, somebody just yes. mentioned your name to me, and it was because you were just on this. So it gave me a little bit of credibility talking to Jeremy there and gave him my quick pitch, and the rest was history. You know what? That's a really good point. That's exactly right. I remember it yeah. absolutely. Uh, I had just done the podcast with you guys, and uh, when Kyle came up to me, I, I just his name was front of mind. Of course, I knew of you because I'd seen pictures of some of the things that you had done and accomplished. But tying that to the fact that you were putting this book together, it just, it just look, it just helped me understand how credible you are. Um, and it's, it listen, it, it's a, a, again, it's a huge honor that someone uh, thinks so highly about that line that they cover it in a book. And when I started the process of the book, I mean, I knew, I didn't know Jeremy, but I'd follow him on social media forever. So I knew, I felt like I knew Jeremy without knowing him, not being a stalker or anything like that, you know, but <laughs> I felt like Jeremy would appreciate this. And I've had this feeling that Jeremy would love something like this and he'd be on board. I was like, if I could just meet him for a second at San Diego Comic-Con, I want to get his seal of approval and then proceed and then give him the final copy later on down the road. 
how did it oh sorry go ahead uh, i was probably gonna ask the same question i was probably asked the same question you were how how did the the process of putting the book come really together and i, I really want to know like sort of the day-to-day -day of like how much time you spent almost each day of like all right i need to work on this portion this day like i i, I really am fascinated by the entire process yeah. of putting this together yeah i mean it it goes back to my youtube channel and i've been doing a jazz classic superstars video every single tuesday for like four years now almost four years every single Tuesday as I've walked through the entire line piece by piece. And uh, along the way, I bought a second collection. And I said, you know what? Because I, I wanted a loose set and I'm in on card set outside of, you know, the Rick Flair 1 of 20, things like that. But the normal line, the exclusives, ringside stuff. So I wanted to do all of that. And uh, that's kind of where it started in my head. I said, you know what? I have a total men on card set. I have access to the ones I don't have for a picture. And Jeremy helped with some pictures in the book as well of some things. And I said, I have a loose set. I said, I don't know if there's anybody else in the world that has both of that. And I don't know if they do, if they would ever tackle a project like this. And one thing I've said in a lot of interviews, it's just such a cool thing to me that, you know, somewhere along the way, you know, 50 years from now, like Jeremy was saying, you know, when they look at classic superstars, they look back at it. You know, if you search classic superstars somewhere in there, either my video is going to pop up, a book's going to be popped up. And it's my favorite line. It's the line that got me into collecting action figures as an adult. And it's just a very special thing to me. So to even be tied in just a little bit of that is such a big honor for me along the way. So uh, really amazing and uh, really special for me. I mean, I definitely have a passion about this line. And I mean, I say it in the book and the forward. I mean, I basically in Toys R Us fell to my knees when I saw that classic Superstar Series 1 Ultimate Warrior because that wasn't being done at all. I mean, it, and people forget, like people look at things with 20, 24 eyes a lot of times. They need to go back to 2004. I mean, it was revolutionary. It was totally revolutionary. We never had anything like that. So, I mean, I could talk for days about that. But doing the book, I said to myself, I think I can do this. I think I have an idea. I had a kind of a plan. I showed you my, I think it was Shawn Michaels Series 1 was kind of my layout. If here was my idea. And I showed that to Jeremy. I said, here's what I'm going to do. And Jeremy was on board. We went with it. And, you know, I've talked before. I mean, a lot of people think I just do YouTube and stuff for a full-time job. I mean, I have a 60-hour-a-week job as an executive for a company so i'm i'm busy uh, all the time you know and i got kids and stuff they're young so i want to spend time with them so i mean this book was all done between like the hours of you know midnight and 3 a.m every single night for almost a year i mean it took about a year to get this done but you know it was a passion project i've said that all along i mean i'm not stephen king i'm not going to get a million dollars out of this book this is not the way it is but it's a passion project it's something cool it's a little bit of a legacy um, just a really fun thing. So it was a lot of late hours. That's for sure. There's no doubt. What, what was um like when, when Kyle, you know, approached you about this, Jeremy, and you were like, obviously you were in and you were excited to do this. What was kind of, I guess, more of like your, like your contributions. I know you did the forward. Um, did you provide any yeah. other like um, information to Kyle, like for the book? Well, look, I mean, for me, you know, I've gone on to another life, you know, we started a toy company and, and so when it came to classic superstars, you know, for me, it's just an incredible memory and it's just a remarkable, uh, you know, of course, um, WWE still makes an incredible action figure line with Mattel today. But at the time it was Jax. And uh, I think that we really did some revolutionary stuff back at that time, including in 2004, we are uh, 2003 we introduced the concept of, and, and, you know, as, a, as I say in the book, introduced the concept to Vince McMahon of uh, really leveraging the strength of the, of, of the alumni, because frankly speaking, they had never done it before and we were suffering. Uh, retail was really suffering. It was action figures at that time were largely seen as kids product. And my perspective was no collectors make up an enormous part of this. I know because I would collect myself if I wasn't making the stuff. And so, you know, I have I had I have had great access to product for the last 25 years, I can tell you that. But so my, you know, for me, it was really more like, you know, would you be willing to write a forward to a book that's celebrating classic superstars? And I said, absolutely. And he said, would you do a Q&A and just answer some questions about what it was like back then? I said, absolutely. And then um, in addition to that, do you have do you have any some do you have old photos or old footage? And of course, uh, you know, I, I absolutely did. So. You know, from that, that's my affiliation. Other than that, you know, this is Kyle's baby and, and he's obviously done a great job. Um, but, you know, from where I sit, just the fact that we're celebrating what, what I think is the greatest line. And I don't think you can beat it. I, I think it's the greatest line in the history of wrestling figures. I think that it's in the same 
vein as LJN of Hasbro's uh, figures that were feature oriented. I think it's in the same vein of what Mattel does today uh, with their elite line. And I actually, you know, would say that this is one of the most important lines, if not the most important of all time, because what it meant for wrestling, not just what it meant for action figures. It changed yeah. everything in the way they saw their alumni association. Yeah, there was so much. I mean, so much has been stair-stepped off of, I mean, just the ruthless aggression style into the deluxe aggression and stuff. I mean, that was the basis for what Mattel and Jazzwares do right now. I mean, the more articulation, yeah. it was getting to that point. And I mean, if you didn't live it, I mean, it's just like here today. I mean, I hear from people all the time. How do you like those LJNs? They're old rubber dog toys and stuff. Unless you lived it and were really in it, you just don't know. And there's a whole area or world of collectors that the classics were everything. I mean, I tell stories, you know, all the time on my channel about the two packs, the three packs. I mean, it introduced so much stuff that was around. And I always say Jeremy and Todd McFarlane are really the two guys that really introduced, you know, chase versions of things and rare editions and all that kind of stuff. And look where that snowballed between everything, Marvel legends, you name it. Everybody's got some of that. They all owe a debt of gratitude you know, to Jeremy here. And I'm not just kissing Jeremy's butt. It's, I mean, it's the truth at the end of the day. So, and Jeremy did, well, you know, he said he did do the forward, the Q and a, he also answered some of my deep questions I've had for hundreds of years. Uh, and he finally answered them in there in the book as well. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a total blast. I, I, I do think, uh, and I appreciate that. I, I think, uh, I think Todd and uh, I think I definitely did contribute significantly to the way uh, modern action figures are seen, displayed, uh, and and how seriously we take the collector business. Um, you know, there's there used to be a fear that if a line had to rely on adults, that you know that it wasn't going to be meaningful, and that that was something that needed to be tossed aside and embraced as a real possibility. So, I want to know in in like recataloging all of this and going through this for, for both of you, I. Kyle, you mentioned like the ultimate warrior figure. Like when you're going back through all of this stuff, does anything stand out of like, they really did that. They, they really like made that. This is one of the coolest things they've done. And, and same kind of, same question to you, Jeremy. Yeah, for me, I mean, it really goes back and we talk about it. Jeremy talks about it is some of the talent that they got that to this day, you know, we haven't seen from any other company and just the special relationship Jeremy had with uh, the WWF at the time that allowed him to, get Bret Hart. I mean, think about how big of a deal that was. I mean, Ultimate Warrior, such a big deal. We take it for granted now because we get figures on a regular basis, but that kind of stuff. And then the Abdul of the Butchers of the world. And I always throw it out there because it always pops in my head, but even guys like Johnny Rods, who Johnny Rods wasn't Hulk Hogan. He wasn't Andre the Giant, but to get somebody like that in the line really makes that line extra special to me because that's taking a chance. I mean, Jeremy wears his business hat every single day and taking a chance on Johnny Rods. Let's be honest. He's not going to sell in the same numbers as Hulk Hogan and finding a way to get that in there with different case counts and stuff. So just a lot of stuff, a lot of the business strategy behind it all is almost as fun as the line in some instances. Yeah. And, and by the way, the, the, the strategy drove demand. So the interesting thing about some of the characters, and I know it drives collectors a little bit crazy, okay? When you do limited edition or you do, or you see things as a uh, A talent, B talent, C talent, and then you seed the line accordingly in terms of the supply. Um, but it drives interest and excitement in characters that otherwise you may not want. If we had made Johnny Rods, uh, you know, uh, the same proportion in the line as we had done for Ultimate Warrior, uh, all of a sudden, not only would you not have the interest in the character, but you would have less interest because it was so plentiful. Uh, when you do limit the supply, all of a sudden people want the character that otherwise wouldn't have wanted it. So it really is a, a glimpse into, you know, economic theory a little bit. I mean, it just, it really is. And, and to give you guys a little bit of a background, the way we would do it and the way we still do things and, and a lot of companies do is you you do you bucket into ABC and let's just say you have a master carton of 12. OK, so when you ship in a master carton, it's got 12, 12 action figures in it. The A's might have three of the 12. The B's may have two. The C's may have one or may have one every other master carton. And so that's the reality of shipping, because if you do make the C have the same incidence as an A, 
I promise you, your line is upside down. You could have a year where you have products still on the shelf. And that's what we try to avoid. Of course, you always can run into that trap again. But with classic superstars, I, I think we rarely ran into that trap. We really mastered uh, the the consumer demand. It was funny. I was right. Out of, you brought up a memory to me. I was right out of college at the time and I was calling on Walmarts in the Midwest and I was calling to store managers and stuff. And during the time, Classic Superstars was hitting. So it was a very nice bonus for me as I'm going store to store doing things. I could look. <laughs> you don't know how many cases I opened up where the Ernie Ladd was not in the Walmart case, but it was in the opposite case. You know, that, that was my white whale for a while. I found it eventually, but oh, it was so frustrating. But that's what kept the hunt going. And you know what? I know it's frustrating and I do. And I, and I, because I'm a collector because when I was a little kid, I, so when I was 10 years old, uh, LJNs came out. Okay. And I think it was 1984. Yeah, okay. Right there, so yeah. the LJN, the LJN wrestling figures came out and I would lived in Columbus, Mississippi at the time. And my mom would take me to the store and I would line up and I would, and man, I just, I loved the LJNs, my favorite action figures of all time. Okay. I, interesting story, those LJNs, and I would notice, okay, you can't get, you can't get all the figures at once. Sometimes one isn't available. Da, da, da. So I go to Jack's Pacific when I'm 29 years old to head up their entire action figure group, which was a, a whole nother story. Uh, and I go upstairs and I, and I get introduced to the CEO and it's a guy named Jack Friedman. And Jack Friedman and I sit down, we talk, and, you know, what, what's attracted you to this job? Well, WWE is one of the biggest uh, th things in my life. Took him through the whole thing, my whole background. Uh, and I, I had come from Mattel, so I had an, a lot of action figure experience with He-Man, et cetera. And anyways, it turns out that Jack Friedman was the J in LJN. So here I am talking to the guy that actually made all those figures that I loved so much when I was 10. And here we are about 20 years later and I'm doing it. So now I've got people coming into my office. I'm talking to people and they're like classic superstars and ruthless aggression and deluxe aggression and adrenaline. Cause guess what? Now it's been another 20 years. So I'm now sitting in the position of Jack Friedman where at the time I was the, the young buck. And I got to tell you, it, it means the world to me. And so this, this whole, this whole thing has just been very meaningful. This whole, time. So I, I really appreciate it to anybody that's seeing this, that finds value in the stuff that we've done. And, and, and again, my greatest and sincerest apologies, because I'm going to still follow the old mission of uh, providing limited editions and chasers, because I know how valuable it is for a line. I know how quickly a line can die if you don't do it the right way. I, I got to put you over real quickly, okay, Jerry, and then and I'll let you ask a, a question. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you, guys are, you guys were mentioning like it was our show that because you were on, you had kind of a reference point and everything. And to me, like when Jensen said, oh yeah, Jeremy Pedaler is going to join us uh, when, when you joined us last year, I was like, are you sure you got the like right person who is joining us? You're, you're talking about Jazzwares, like the head of Jazzwares. And Jensen's like, yeah. <laughs> like he's going to, and you gave us like an hour and a half of your time yeah. that night. And yeah. I was just shocked. I was like, are we, is this real life? Right now, so when, when Kyle, you mentioned uh, me meeting Jeremy at Comic Con and using it as a reference, I'm like, I'm not stunned at all that Jeremy was like, yeah, sure, I'd love to help you out with this because I didn't think you would give us an hour and a half of your time. I didn't think you'd come on this show, and now you're back for a second time. So I appreciate just how personable you've been and how kind you've been to us. So yeah, I was not shocked to hear that. Like, yeah, he's helping Kyle out with this. This this makes a lot of sense just based on the limited interaction that I have with him. Wow. That, There's no that, question there. I just want to put you over. <laughs> no, listen, I'll, and I'll say this to you. I just don't see life uh, as, a, uh, as a dot on a board. Uh, I see it as a scatter plot. And like if I had lived 100 lives, I would have been, uh, we could have easily shifted positions where you're leading a toy company. I'm leading up a, a, a podcast that a lot of people hear. And, a, and, and establishing an entire brand and franchise around content management. I could have been writing a classic superstars book. I just don't think of life in, in the sense as to I'm sitting here and this is, I just think of it as the, like we're all in that same universe. We're all in the same genre. Uh, we are all taking on specific roles that we're playing within this universe, but I could have easily and happily 
been doing any of the things that you guys are doing. And so I really appreciate your giving me those kinds of acknowledgements, but I'll throw it right back at you. I think what you guys do is really cool. And, uh, and, and, you know, Steven and Jeremy, and I think Kyle, you know, putting the time and, and the energy of, of 12 o'clock at night and spending hours working on something when life is hard and sleep is precious. I mean, that means a lot. I hope people really understand that, you know, that's real. That's real. Uh, you know who doesn't understand that necessarily? When you're 20, you know, because you can you can do whatever. You can go out and drink all night, wake up the next day, everything's cool. Let me tell you something. When you get in your 30s and in your 40s and beyond, dude, those nights are hard. Those are hard nights. So doing it on purpose for month after month to put together something that really is uh, such a, a big um, passion play. I mean, honestly, it means a lot to everybody. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned <clears throat> that you, um, you like the, I want to know like some feedback that y'all have gotten from the book and you had mentioned like adult collectors and how that not, that necessarily wasn't very cool, you know, a long, you know, a while back. And now it's like become cool, or at least in my opinion, it's become cool. I, I, I collect action figures. A lot of people I know collect action figures. Um, and someone that really got me into that. And I've talked to both of y'all about that was Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, the whole, you know, the whole major wrestling figure pod. Um, have y'all gotten any feedback from those guys about this book or this process? Are they a part of it at all? I I actually uh, talked to Matt Cardona last weekend. He was in town here. So I had a, a chat with him and, you know, like Jeremy, I know Matt too. So uh, Matt and Matt, great supporter of the book. He bought a soft cover and a hard cover edition. So shout out to Matt Cardona and the team over there. But Matt's a Matt's a champion of action figures across the board. I mean, it, you know, I, because of his stature, you know, he gets a hard time sometimes, but he is a nice guy at the end of the day. And he's just one, he roots for everybody's successes, uh, at least in my experiences with Matt. So Matt's a good guy. And yeah, he enjoyed the book. He said, so. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, those guys, uh, Matt, Brian, uh, they're just, uh, they're full on, the real deal. I mean, they, they full on love the genre of collecting and figural collecting. They know as much as anybody about the history of it. Uh, remember the let it breathe universe. Yeah. Like not only was he spending real money, but he was busting them open so that people could enjoy it. Like it seemed irrational because it was, uh, at the time he was doing that, that hasn't been more than just a few years ago. So like he was spending real money to bust those things open. Like, you know, they're the real deal and they've created a brand and they deserve all the good things that happen. And, and you know what? Cardona is a character. Uh, and I mean that literally and figuratively. Uh, he actually is a character, uh, as a lot of these guys are that are that are wrestling. But he's also uh, just a really interesting uh, human uh, and uh Long after the wrestling days are over, I'm telling you, he's going to be a force in the world of collectability. Um, who knows? Maybe he'll have uh, one of the biggest companies in this space one day. I wouldn't put anything past those guys. Yeah. Um, one other thing. Well, I, I had a few more questions for you as well, Jeremy, because I know you're on some limited time. And you had mentioned how important it is to have, you know, limited runs and have things that, you know, people are out there seeking. Today is kind of a perfect day to talk about this because it, this this will air on Thursday uh, tomorrow morning but today I saw the uh the whole article on comicbook.com about the Jazzwares oh. vault. Um, yes. Can you please talk about that cuz I've been excited for these Ring of Honor figures. I'm I'm pumped on this Claudio and this Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, I so the vault is um our direct consumer uh program and we've been very slow to enter this because we wanted to make sure that we would um, put together a direct consumer offering that wasn't just going to be sporadic. Like we wanted to have the downstream product available. So we put together a several year plan of product that every single quarter, you're going to see new product coming out from AEW and from Star Wars and from Halo and Call of Duty and Hello Kitty and Squishmallows and you know, so on and so forth. Um, you know, obviously one of the biggest brands that we have is Pokemon. We haven't officially announced some of the things that we plan on doing in the future because we're still working through some of those things. But don't be surprised if you see some really incredible stuff. The other thing that we didn't announce today 
is that we will do some crowdfunding, super high end, exciting things too. Um, and, and so like, you know, and it's not because, you know, we're the fourth largest toy company now, you know, the, and if you don't count Lego as a traditional toy company, we're number three. Um, so it's not because there's a lack of funds, but we just want to make sure that before the tooling goes out there, that there's the demand that would allow for it, but there's going to be some crazy stuff that we develop and it's going to be adult collector driven. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, we're going to keep the bar fairly low, if, especially in the crowdsource stuff We're we're going to make sure it's completely achievable. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff we announced today from AEW, uh, the ring and the ring of honor figures, uh, you know, you saw Claudio, you saw, um, uh, gosh, Kenny Omega. Your, yeah, Omega. Absolutely. Sorry. Uh, this is what happens. I'm 50. What can I tell you? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, I think that we, you're going to see downstream a lot more there. Um, and it's, it's just going to be a, a lot of fun. So we're, we're ready to roll there. Do you have any follow-up questions, Kyle, about any of this this news to for Jeremy? <laughs> I bet sounds like I better clear some space for maybe a couple of big play sets, old school Jack's days. We'll see. <laughs> like grab like a big box and, and see like what's in it or something. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, open it up. What's in there? Oh, yeah, you know, what's in the box? I don't even oh. know what's in this one. You know, am you know, I taking the risk to, to open something that we haven't even uh, announced oh, yet? Exclusive. That'd be insane. That'd be you know that make my whole that make my whole life. You know that now, tower. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. You guys maybe go through a different question with Kyle about something else. In the meantime, well, I'll just be here trying to figure out what the heck this thing is. How about that? I, I will okay. say if we if we do need to cut anything out, we can cut anything out. So I, I don't <laughs> okay. want you to feel you have That's to do okay. this and then like oh that show and so we can't cut anything that we need yeah. to cut. we, we don't want to but we can leave it here we can leave it in this room if we need yeah. to I, uh, we have to <laughs> i think that we probably won't have to cut this out oh this is oh oh star wars that's pretty cool see that's uh, one know, thing I, about the vault too that i think a misconception at least obviously everybody that's watching this is probably a wrestling fan a lot of people think the vault is just for wrestling figures and no it's for a lot more than just that and i think wrestling fans get themselves in a bubble sometimes and forget there's more than just wrestling more in the world yeah. you know i will say that the wrestling community is one of the most active communities and one of the most desirable communities to be a part of look at this so by the way so now i have there's, this is the third box. This is the box within the box within the box. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not we're not messing around. We we really want to do something memorable here. Let's see which one this one is. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah, high so, uh, This is a. Uh, oh, did you catch that? Yeah, it looked like oh, one of fifteen hundred. Oh, oh boy. Very cool. This is the oh, um, this is the Starfighter class collection. At, at, I, yeah, I realize this is not wrestling. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's still right. sick. If you want to see something that Jeremy recently put out, that actually myself and Jeremy Lambert have both touched because Jeremy got it for me at the event. Oh, um, did he come? I, I did not realize this. It got shipped and it was there. So we, we, let's go to the Star Wars uh, figures first here. Jason, oh, yeah, go for it. As, as Pinar is uh, showing them off. So, so this is a set of, this is our Series 4 set that you can only get on the vault in this particular fashion. It's got a chase of a uh, one of 5,000. It's got the chase and the rare, the um, X-Wing and uh, both X-Wings. So anyways, you get the point. The point of the matter yeah. is whether it's wrestling, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's Halo, Call of Duty, whatever it may be, you, we're gonna do some really cool special stuff for the collecting community. Well, you know it because I am a big fan of the AW shop exclusives that y'all do based on oh. AW pay per views. This yep. whole wall, you can't see it, but this whole side wall is all the shop exclusives you put out so far. Just got this one in the mail the other day. This is the Sting. Yep. So, very, very cool. And I have a signed one in the mail right now from Jeremy that I waited for. Okay, on, I didn't so. know if that came. Yes, it hadn't arrived. Mail. It okay. hadn't arrived yet, but I got I got the unsigned one already in the mail, like from AEW, and then um I got a signed one also. So I, I doubled up on the on the sting. Really appreciate it. I did too. I, I had to get two of those. I got two of them <laughs> myself. And I asked you, you know what else I got? Here's a throwback for Jeremy today. I got in the mail today. I've always wanted this, never pulled the trigger, finally got it. The Punjabi prison from Jack. Oh <laughs> I got I'll that in the story. mail today. <laughs> I'll give you a story on that. So tell me this. 
what did you pay for the Punjabi prison match? I got a heck of a deal. Okay. $75 well, shipped. Wow. Yeah. What would that item sell for generally speaking? That's a couple hundred. Around two, yeah, 200, 225 maybe shipped, something in that vein. So, yeah, that's why I didn't pass on it. <laughs> so, what we used to do uh, back in the day is we would create, remember, it was Toys R Us, Kmart, KB, Walmart, Target. Those were the big five, okay? And I would cycle play sets. I would have a play set that would be launched for everybody. And then I would cycle those play sets and match them with one account so that every account then had a unique and exclusive play set. This was like 2005, six, seven yeah. time frame. Yeah. And Punjabi prison match. I remember uh, we created that one and Toys R Us went deep. They went deep with this one. Okay. And they were like, man, this has worked every single year. Every year you come out with this other elimination chamber or the regular money in the, bank. Know, money in the bank, whatever. Every year it was a new one. Okay. Punjabi prison match sold about 15% of the inventory. And the other 85% yeah. uh, was melted, essentially. And so basically what I'm saying to you guys is there's a rarity to it because at the time it didn't have the demand that some of these other sets had. So yeah. I don't know where they are. They may have been melted into one giant statue with a <laughs> dagger through my heart, <laughs> but there's some Punjabi prison matches that, uh, that and I, I love, I love things like that. Cause that's taking a chance and you got to take a chance in any kind of business. <laughs> and that's something we'll never probably ever get again. I mean, I don't see Mattel or anybody making that again. You know, I'm convinced. I'm convinced the GCW match that Cardona's running with the Punjabi Prison, he's going to have a Punjabi Prison playset, and, and that's going to be how they hold this match. Because I don't think you could do an actual set in, in the arena that they're running. No. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I'm cool. very interested to see how the GCW Punjabi Prison match goes. Um, oh my gosh. Um, also, I wanted to really quickly also just mention uh, Jeremy that. I still don't own any Squishmallows, but I see them everywhere now. Oh, like coward. ever since, ever oh. yeah, yeah, oh. ever since our interview, I I can't get away from them, and I probably shouldn't even admit this. I've hugged many of them and then like, just, like <laughs> put them back on the shelf. Like I, did I, you I, did you know I have a complete room? We have a spare bedroom in our house, and it is full of Squishmallows. Like literally, Scrooge McDuck Squishmallows <laughs> overflowing through. I mean, there's probably I'm not lying, 500 Squishmallows in that room. I was oh, unbelievable. Yeah. I was second. looking. I was be... looking around simply yeah. because my my daughters will leave their squishmallows in our room. I think there's one on on the opposite side over here. They have a competition to see like who can get more. Uh, all, all the we have twelve kids and they have a competition oh. to see who can just have more. That's that's kayfabe. Uh, to see who can get uh more squishmallows. There, it's always like nope. I got it. She got one. I got to get one now. It's a it's a giant. Leads to a lot of fights. Well, it's I'll like a safe you. room. So it sounds to me with 500, you're well on your way to your second book, Kyle. Because <laughs> I, mean, I tell you, I don't even know how you track all that. Oh my gosh! Well, Come you know, our, we, on our uh, vault uh, and Squishmallows direct consumer site, we are going to track every Squishmallow that we can track. So there's wow. thousands, and and I yeah. think we're going to provide a very uh, in depth look at what's out there. So that that's coming uh, down the pipe. Okay. Can I get a Squishmallow named after me? It would really pop my two girls. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. The Kyle Peterson. Watch or something. Yeah. I'll sign on anything I need to. I think it would just be hilarious. So they they would be they would be impressed by that. They're not impressed by this. They'd be impressed by that. Oh, they'll be impressed by. I think the bio would be like loves to rock, likes yeah. to work late at night. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Good hair. That's, That's gonna be the bio. That's how I had to set up this interview with, with my kids. It's like, I'm doing an interview at seven and they're like, oh, another wrestling person. I was like, no. Him, that's fantastic. Yeah. Any wrestling talk, you're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Let's debut uh, that as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, the Kyle Peterson Squishmallow. Kyle. Be <laughs> Dude, bro, all you have to do is cross out the name and put Kyle. And that's yeah. all it takes. Yeah, I, I will good. say that, uh, 
I'll do a two seconds on Squishmallows, and I realize this is not the perfect form for Squish. <laughs> but uh, we we acquired Squishmallows uh, in 2019, about a year and a half after it launched, and um, we we thought, man, this this is a very interesting brand. Then we did some studying, we did a little research, and we found that it wasn't kids; it was adults, it was older age consumers. And so we we tailored our messaging on TikTok and other social media channels, and it just it just absolutely blew up. I think we've uh, I think we're nearing three hundred million Squishmallows sold units, uh, which is uh, kind of outrageous. It's almost impossible to wrap your head around. I know we're five hundred <laughs> MR. I know we're five hundred yeah. MR. Yeah, I exactly. believe it. I believe it. I can't tell you how many times I've been just like walking down an aisle somewhere, whether it's like the mall or just like the store or anywhere. And me and my brother usually like we'll go shopping together. And I always mention, I'm like, I know that guy. I just like, like, I, just, like, you know, I know that guy. You know, and I, I point, I point at the Squishmallows. And my brother's response is always, then have him send you one. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not going to just like ask him for free Squishmallows, but like, I, I, but they're so soft. I like, I, I pick right, them up fine. and I'm like, these things are very, very, I, I can understand. Send me your address after this. Send me your address after this. Are you going to send me a squish yeah, we'll take care oh of that. My, take care oh, that. my God, dude. Oh, I love that. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I'm, I'm very, that's going to, that goes so deep, so many levels that, that my, my brother is going to love that too. Um, but, uh, I don't even know what I was going to say next. Now, now I'm thinking about these squishmallows. Um, Kyle, I'm going to put you on the spot real quick while we have Jeremy still. Oh. How important is it in 2024 to have pinless joints on your figures? Oh, yeah. Give me the pinless joints, Jeremy. Well, the Supremes have them. The They're Supremes beautiful you have them. on the Supremes. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely beautiful. But I, I'm hoping that technology gets adopted slowly into the elite line and un, or the elite line, the unmatched and unrivaled lines. I think it's a fair, it's a very fair ask. You know, for us, it was a way to differentiate. Um, but these things are becoming more and more standard. It's it's always, it's a, the progression has been amazing, right? Because we went from cartoonish rubber characters to smaller characters with a feature that had some level of articulation, some playability, to uh, really kids product, but with better articulation, to, to, uh, when we went from the beginning of Jax to when, you know, we really focused in on uh, ruthless aggression and adrenaline, then we really got more collector classic superstars and then the handoff to Mattel and then Jazzwares coming in, our company Jazzwares coming in with uh, AEW, like every, every iteration gets a little bit more authentic. Um, I kind of feel like we're pushing the bounds of authenticity now, like, scale detailed sculpt deco and and really what it comes down to now is uh cost like you can get more and more authentic but it it costs a little bit more so maybe at some point in time there's like a super duper like realistic high end like as high as you can take it figure line that is the ultimate 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 uh celebration um, and that that may be a way to do it, but also you got to keep in mind people's pocketbooks, and you know not everybody is ready to roll out some a big chunk of change for a singular figure. But that 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 that's the interesting uh, move. It's always been towards authenticity. Although we did try a couple kids lines along the way back in the day. We did face flipping fighters, maybe the worst line of WWE <laughs> figures of all time. Uh, uh, Kyle did not do a book about face flipping fighters. <laughs> We're working uh, on it. Slow, slow book. <laughs> and we did pump and flex. You remember pump and flex? Pump and yeah, flex. Okay. Uh, so pump and flex <laughs> was basically you would do this with the arms, and then the stomach you would see would become very like like you'd see the six pack and stuff like that. It was like a rubber that would go over the stomach on the back of it was like a tooled item. But that rubber started disintegrating like seconds after being manufactured. So if that sat on your shelf realistically for a couple of years, you're a pump and flex doll. So if anybody's got a perfect pump and flex, I want to see that perfect <laughs> pump and flex. I want to see if anybody can pump and flex. I want to see that. Don't send me any weird stuff. I want to see that. <laughs> Jeremy, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, let everybody know where they can find you at and everything that's going on at Jazzwares. 
Yeah. So, um, gosh, quickly about Jazzwares. You know, like I said, we're we're in the top four toy companies. Uh, we're the global partners for brands like Pokemon, Hello Kitty, Coco Melon, Roblox, Fortnite, uh, so on and so forth. We we own Squishmallows. Uh, we were acquired by Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, so Warren Buffett's our boss now. Uh, this was this happened last year. And uh, it's been it's been an incredible dream to go from, uh, you know, I started Wicked. We start we started Wicked Cool Toys 13 years ago. We we uh, sold uh, to private equity and Allegheny and, and Jazzwares in 2019. And then together as partners, we sold to Berkshire Hathaway. And, you know, for me to stay here as the chief business officer, working with Judd and Laura Zaberski, who are our CEO and president, um, it's just been Amazing. So Jazzwares can be found at Jazzwares, basically on any channel you're looking for. If you're ever looking for my wisecracks, you can find them at Jeremy Com on Twitter or at Jeremy Padauer, P-A-D-A-W-E-R on Instagram. And that's and I drop a TikTok from here and there, but they're pretty lame. And that's that's pretty much it. Do you do like dance TikToks? What's that? Do you dance on your TikToks? Do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm doing them right now. Awesome. Hey. Well, that's hey. Pretty, that's, I hope that's not a meme. Really, that would be the worst thing that ever happened. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Uh, well, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Well, I, I I appreciate you for coming back on here again tonight, and hopefully we can get you on again sometime yeah. in the future um, to talk more collectibles and yeah, NFTs and hey, all that good stuff again. So, listen, I'm 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 here. I'm here. I think you guys are awesome, and I'm 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 ready to come back. So we'll figure this out. And uh, Kyle. You wrote it. You, you did a great thing. That that book is terrific. Um, thank you for including me to write your forward. I hope that you have great success with this thing. And thank you for covering uh, a uh, an era that had really changed, not just action figures, but wrestling. Just remember this. If it wasn't for classic superstars, I don't know when and if they would have really understood the power of the classic roster. So every one of those guys that were at independent events signing whatever, t-shirts, figures, apparel, whatever it may be, or getting booked in general, like a lot of that was due to the fact that that their merchandisability was recognized. And uh, and I'm very appreciative to, to my time at Jax, and I'm very appreciative to WWE and what they did at the time. Uh, so anyways, guys, thank you so much. I'm going to drop off. I know Kyle's going to be here for a while and, uh, thank you so much. I'll see you thank guys you, soon. Jeremy. Great Thanks, seeing you, Jeremy. Jeremy. See you. See you later this year, maybe in San Diego. Oh yeah. Sandy, uh, I'll be, we'll, we'll have a huge, uh, booth at San Diego comic-con. We have a lot of exclusives, including AEW and, uh, please y'all, whomever hears this, feel free to come by, ask for me. I'll say hi. And, uh, if you bring a book by and Kyle's there, he'll sign it. And if I'm there, you probably don't want my signatures. That's fine. I don't mind. Uh, but it's all good. I'll, I'll sign whatever you got. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Thanks, See you, Jeremy. Bye. Later. How oh, cool he's the that? man. He's yeah. the man. He's the man. Oh, well, Kyle. Now let's I talk just, bad about him. I just noticed the T-shirt. <laughs> you still seeing Riho out there on the pegs? <laughs> dangerous getting dangerous three left in my area of my like 22 stores i hit regularly I got three left that one may be a become, sad day that one may become the Pujabi prison of the aew but, line you know she's back on tv pretty regularly she was like main event last week so it's time for that blue repaint i think it's time let's keep that streak going <laughs> yes yes um yeah, what what are you looking forward to most right now as far as like stuff coming out? Like I know you, you cover, I mean, I guess we'll stick to wrestling, but like I guess yeah. like wrestling lines and, and figures. What what are you most looking forward to right now? Yeah, I'm I mean keeping it with Jeremy a little bit. I'm excited for this vault to see where that all ends up going. Um I've been in meetings all day until I got here, but I haven't read the comic book article yet. And I don't know if they got too deep in the weeds quite yet on it, but I'm hoping I, this is for GI Joe fans. There used to be a GI Joe kind of figure of the month kind of thing back in the day. I would love to see the vault try to do something like that. Don't give us 10 things at once, but give us, you know, maybe one figure for 20 to $30 a month or something. I would love to see something like that in the future. Uh, I'm excited tomorrow as we're filming this, or I mean, it's Friday, I guess, uh, whatever day this is. What is time, as I always do say, but Friday is the revealed thing on uh, Mattel Creations. So excited to see that CM Punk. And I think they have some other things in the works as well. And then, of course, Mania is just right around the corner, and we're going to get an onslaught of stuff, and our pockets are just going to be crying 
because we're going to see so much stuff. And then you follow that up as just as that starts to kind of wear off San Diego Comic-Con hits and then you just get flooded once again. And so it's an exciting time right now in the figure world and the wrestling figure world for the next couple of months. I'm, I'm looking forward to that CM Punk. I, I'm the biggest CM Punk hater you'll find in watcher for when it comes yeah. to CM Punk. It's funny. Um, but I'm looking forward to more of the Mattel creations and, and then maybe doing like vault, you know, these vault creations and stuff. I was, you know, I was bummed out about the, uh, the Mattel WCW thing that fell through for like a lot of reasons. One that it didn't happen, but two, then it seemed to like the trickle down screwed us all out of the Ray Mysterio. We wanted the maskless Ray. Yeah. You have any idea what the hell happened with that? It must have been somewhere in the WWE or something. There, there's somebody said no, or maybe Ray himself. I mean, it's it's a wild thing. You know, I hear it in the comments of my videos all the time, maybe probably more than you guys do, but like I get every day, why doesn't Mattel make this guy this guy? I'm like, <laughs> trust me, Mattel wants to make Legion of Doom. They want to make every Legion of Doom under the sun, but they can only do what they're allowed to, and they get a lot of flack for that. And same thing with Ray Mysterio. You're not telling me Bill and Steve don't want to make that. I mean, they have they showed it to us, right? They want it to come out. It's just somewhere in the WWE machine, somebody said no. And I don't know if it's one of those things that maybe once Ray finally retires, it would come out or what. But yeah, pretty disappointing because we've got a lot of Rays. We, we're, well, let's be honest, there's been a million Ray figures. That is a unique Ray figure for sure. Yeah, what we're talking about, Jeremy, just so you know, if you don't know, or the people that are listening that may not know, um, there was a, 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 like, how do you, the, Mattel does something where you basically, you, you buy ahead of time, but enough people have to pitch in for them to even make it. And they did this for WCW with a ring, this whole arena set yeah, up. Set. Yeah. I remember. And, yeah. I covered this. And one of the, one of the figures was a masked Rey Mysterio and that wound up not happening, but there was a separate figure that we all saw pictures of that was like made like a, like a prototype of a maskless Rey Mysterio with the horns from WCW. And we all okay. got super hyped up on it. And then when the ring didn't happen, that they basically just seemed like they transferred that masked ray and put it in the like the slot of when the maskless ray was going to come out. So now we're all like, "Where's the maskless ray?" Haven't heard anything yeah. since. And well, that's yeah. what they said. This was a way they got around it because those were all Ultimate Edition figures. This is going to be an Elite, but it's the same gear, same everything. And that's what they're going to do. I think all those figures that we saw for that stage will get an Elite form. We just won't get an Ultimate form. Is I think what will happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember the the set and they tried to basically crowdfund it and I didn't quite understood how that worked. I'm I'm not into the figure game like y'all are. I actually wanted to ask Bedauer about the he mentioned the the pump and flex uh figures. You guys remember the maximum sweat yeah figures? Of course. Yeah, you like I really wanted more. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to know the thought process behind that because those those even today like baffle yeah. me. But as a kid, I was like What's the point of these? It's what are we doing? The gross out figures. I mean, there was tons of different ones, and that was kind of the WWE's take on gross out figures, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what are we doing there? Next Who time wants we have to clean up on. a mess of like water when you're done playing with your toys. <laughs> <laughs> Next they, time we have an hour on, uh, we got to ask him about the the maximum sweat. Jensen. And I'm pretty sure it came. I don't care. I don't remember if the thing was full or not, but it definitely said sweat on the little tube that you use, like. So it was like you filled the sweat with yeah. water and then you put you put it in the thing. And yeah, that was such a that was a weird, that was a very weird one. Um, like they were trying to trying to make figures of anything and everything. I mean, that was certainly where a period that WWF was as hot as you know they they've ever been during that time. So I don't blame them for trying to pump out as much as they, they could. Yeah, it is what it is. I get it. Um trying to think what other what other action figure lines outside of WWE or outside of wrestling right now are you like really are you really stoked on that you're really collecting hard right now? Being an 80s kid, the G.I. Joe classified line's always near and dear to my heart. So I love G.I. Joe. I mean, I've been a lifelong G.I. Joe fan, really. I mean, He-Man got me into action figures, and then G.I. Joe went from there, and then wrestling and G.I. Joe ran side by side pretty much to this day. And uh, there's a lot of fun in that line, a lot of good memories and cool updates and things. So that's really, I mean, that line really has stolen a lot of thunder from, I think, Star Wars Black Series and Marvel Legends even. So pretty popular in the Joes, and I'm right there on board for that. How, how are you feeling about the Ninja Turtles lines right now, especially the um, the NECA figures? Yeah, it's it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, 
However, there was uh, leaked images of the planogram for Holothon next uh, month, and it's at Target. So it looks like, I think I did a quick math, and it was like $700 worth of new NECA turtle figures coming out next month. So I'm like, geez, why don't you just bombard us? Because it seems like there's been a little bit of a lull outside of a couple of figures for a while, and now they're just, bam, here it all is. Enjoy. Yeah. So I've got, you know, rules like everyone. I don't know what, your rules are very you know, you collect so much. I don't know. I, I don't know how you exactly determine what you do and don't collect. I've got an, I've thing. got an important rule. Everybody, that's one of the questions I always get is, what is your rule for collecting? And my number one rule is, if I can't display it, I don't need it. So that's I don't have totes of things. I don't have storage. I don't have a storage unit. Uh, if I can't see it, what use is it being here? So that's kind of yes. my rule. That's a good rule. And, and my rule for the turtles is I collect specifically for Secret of the Ooze for the for the second movie. So I get like, uh, I was really hyped up. Like I actually got, um, you can't really see it. It's it's signed, but I got the uh, Ernie Race Jr. Um, signature on his, uh, like the Pizza Boy um, yeah. one that he has. And then I got the, uh, the other one with the Foot Clan soldier. So like when they got his likeness, I was like, oh, this is sweet. Like they're finally making some of these characters that I really wanted. Then I saw they're going to be coming out with the, uh, like the professor, like the, yeah. with the ooze and all that stuff. So I just unboxed yeah. him. I, I had, I got him a couple of weeks ago. Oh, did you? I didn't even know that was out yet already. I think uh, it was a long pre-order. I mean, you had to pre-order it, but apparently if you go to NEC online right now, they must have some stock left so you can order it right now on their website. It's not going to be sold in stores. They said, Oh, okay. Gotcha. I need to, I need to get on that. The it's cool. How, I know you're big on like the packaging and stuff. Um, how important is that for people? No, like like for instance the the kino that behind me came in like a pizza box i thought it was really cool how they like package all that together it just made it even more special yeah i love i mean i'm a primarily loose collector i mean i just because of space and room i mean if i had everything mint on card or mint in box I, i'd be i wouldn't have room i mean it's just impossible so but at heart i'm a mint on card guy i love mint on card i do have some collections mint on card but the packaging you know i love uh, seeing leaked images of the figures or the images that Mattel shows us, for example. I love that process. I love the pre-order process. As long as I get my figures on the pre-order, I guess, you know, <laughs> there is that. But I love that. I love getting them in the mail. I love opening them out of the mail. I love sitting down at the review table. I love sitting. I mean, it's a whole process for me. It's always been that way since I was a little kid. The packaging, I would soak it in. I would look it over. I wasn't one of those animal kids that didn't even look at it, ripped it open. I would be Oh my gosh, look at the back. Here's the file card. I mean, it's always been an important part of my reviews. And some people say, just get to the figure, skip three minutes past the box. But to me, a toy review or looking at a toy, whatever you want to call it, it starts with that packaging. And I love the packaging. I, I absolutely do. It's sometimes it's just as fun as the figure. Yep. And then you bust it open and see you later. <laughs> so yeah, then it goes to the recycling. Yeah, it's, it's tough life sometimes. <laughs> Any any hidden gems, wrestling or otherwise, you found in stores since the last time we talked to you? Uh, nothing that jumps out. Um, you know, for the most part, all like the vintage lines and stuff, I'm pretty much where I want to be with that kind of stuff. So there's not really anything I'm looking for. Um, obviously, if I see a screaming deal out there, I'll grab something. But uh, Kane County Toy Show is one of the biggest toy shows in the United States. I think it's actually the biggest toy show in the United States. It's outside of Chicago. That's in April. So maybe after that, I might find something special out there. We'll see. Um before we get out of here, I know we got to wrap up here soon. So Jeremy can cover AEW Dynamite, uh, do his do his real job, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, how how is the YouTube channel? I know you'll plug it here in a second, but how is all that going, man? I know you you film a ton of a ton of content. You mainly film all kind of at one time and then release throughout the week. And one of the things that I love about your channel is the little uh, I don't know what you call them, like the 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 sayings like stuff that you like yeah. you were kind of repeat yourself but like they become like little sayings for your show yeah. and i always catch myself when i get a new figure that has multiple head sculpts i always say choose your own head adventure <laughs> and it always always yeah. it always makes me laugh to myself um how's the how's the channel going man since the last time we talked because i know it's yeah, I mean, a lot. yeah we're about a week away i think from the four-year anniversary of the channel so that's pretty cool i think uh four years you know if sometimes it seems like it's been 10 sometimes it seems like it's been four days and i guess you guys probably say the same thing about the podcast i'm sure so it's just kind of the way it goes. But yeah, four-year anniversary coming up. I got a really big giveaway. I guess I'll give you guys the exclusive before I get into it. But I have a, uh, a special figure, a one-of-one one that will be given away. A one-of-one. One. And uh, yeah, so more on that on my channel. But uh, yeah. Is it like Cody Rhodes? Like I'm just going to ask him like a one-of-one. No, it's, it'll be a produced figure, but I did get... Real. 
A uh, wow. one of one. So more on that, but I'll give that as part of a giveaway with before your anniversary of my channel and this book. So if you bought a copy of this book, you could be entered in to get this one of one figure. I mean, that's pretty, I want to keep it for myself, but I was like, ah, no. <laughs> oh but, my so God. that is coming up for your anniversary there. And I think I'm, and I have to hit 40,000 subscribers before I'll give it away. And I, by the time that video drops, I might be there. I think I'm like 400 away for something like that from 40,000 subscribers. So some good, oh. exciting giveaways to come very soon. That's very big of you, Kyle, to give away a one of one. That's actually unheard of. I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody doing that before. So yeah, um, I'm looking forward to knowing what's going on with that. I, and I've been in the DMs with you. I'm going. I'm buying a signed copy of the book from you because people can buy signed copies directly from Kyle. Um, yeah, Jeremy, do you have any follow up? I know, I know, we got to run, but do you have anything else before we get into Kyle plugging everything and? I, I wanted to, much like I did with uh, Padawa, give Kyle some some flowers here in, in that, like, you know, when you were talking about your, your book process um, earlier in the episode, and then last time we talked to you, your process overall of, like, I know you don't seem to sleep too often, but I know you have, like, the 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 the, the shoot job, what we, you know, we like to call things, but, like, that takes up a lot of time. You mentioned you had kids, like, that that's obviously going to take up time. And like to still find the time and the commitment and, and just the work ethic to do everything else. I think I said this to you last time, but I, I want to reiterate it again. Like that, I, I hope that says something to a lot of people. And I hope people uh, Jensen, what are you doing? So what just happened there was um, I collect Funko Pops. And one of them just fell off the shelf onto a bunch of other stuff. So that was uh, that was that was figure fate right there. It was a Funko that, domino effect. That oh, was that was a that was a Toy Story type scenario that one of my toys overheard us talking about all of this and started moving around. So um. <laughs> amazing. All right. Well, as I was saying, like I appreciate how like your your work ethic overall. Yeah, I think I feel like I said this last time, but I'm gonna repeat myself here because I people who have a strong work ethic just go it it goes a long way with me. So the fact that you were like doing this book from midnight to to three a.m. it was such a passion project for you, and you got to your final goal and you, you put it out and everything's gone well with it. Like that says a lot. So I, I appreciate you for that. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I always give props to my dad. I think he instilled a lot of that. I, I think I have a lot of that from my dad for sure. And, and I always say, you know, people say, how do you find time? And I want to start a YouTube channel or a podcast. What do I do? I mean, my answer at the all time, have a passion, have fun with it. Don't care about your views and things. I mean, I, I, you care, but you don't care because you're having fun. And that's what it is. Stress relief at the end of the day. And they always say, Kyle, well, how do I do it? Well, if you want something bad enough and it goes for anything in life, you just find a way you, you put in the work and you get there. I mean, if you want it, you'll find the time if you want to do it. So that's kind of my yeah. rules I live by. I hope your dad's doing well. Hope he's still listening to Sleepy Brown doing his thing. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, he loves Sleepy Brown still. Yeah, and, yep, he does. Very cool. I, I've never really popped my brother as well because I've, I've told you before that he's trained Sleepy in boxing. Yeah. He does like two classes with him and stuff. So just really, really small world. Um, Shout out to my dad. He'll be watching this video. He'll watch it. Awesome. I think it's really cool, by the way, how the two of y'all, like how you bring him onto the show and like he was a, it still is a collector at heart. I mean, I yeah. guess really. Um, yeah, he, but dabbles. Just, he dabbles. He dabbles. <laughs> it's, it's really cool the bond that you guys have. Um, and it's even like, you know, my dad's come around a little bit. Like he, my, my dad has my whole life. He's, I think hate is a pretty accurate word. I think he hated my obsession with pro wrestling, with the stuff that I, he just wasn't, he, he wasn't into it at all. Like, there was a giant waste of money, waste of time, just, you know everything and he's come around more recently a little bit um i think he respects my collection a little bit maybe um but i recently got him a pat mcafee figure um because he listens to the that's one of our common things that we have nowadays is like he likes the pat mcafee show and so do i so we both watch it you know and we talk about the show and stuff so i bought him a pat mcafee figure since he had the basic come out and um my dad displayed it in his new bar that he made at his house recently like he put it up with his stuff and i was like there you go you're starting your own little collection there Your, your YouTube channel is doing so well, man. I, I know it, I discovered it probably around four years ago when you put out yeah. uh, your first big uh, display tour. And uh, I've been following it, you know, all, all the way, all the way since. And uh, to see the growth and to see the community y'all got and um, you're very authentic. You hadn't changed at all. You're the same dude who who started the channel and it just keeps getting better and better, man. So I'm, uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing, putting in that kind of work. Because like Jeremy said, dude, I know you have a legitimate job and you're already kind of in that world of like, we yeah. talked about that in our previous interview, people who may have missed it. Kyle's shoot job lends a little bit of 
favor as far as like his collection his collecting as well like he knows he knows the game very very well unlike most others so um <laughs> thank thank you again for, well, for being i, I appreciate here. it i mean i think you were the first one to ever ask me for an interview so that's how i know you go way back to the in, in beginning so oh my that's gosh cool. well, this is great this is this 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 whole interview warmed my heart kyle just <laughs> saying that jerry fedora sending me a squishmallow so i mean special heartwarming episode a special episode here today a very special episode yes <laughs> yeah. um kyle make sure everyone knows ao well i guess we already did we already plug everything no. We, no no yeah plug, no. yeah come on jensen yeah kyle let everybody know they can find you at <laughs> yeah i mean you can find me at sir paul 64 on the x the underscore kyle underscore peterson on instagram and threads if anybody uses threads i don't know i'm over there and then kyle peterson 1980 kyle peterson 2.0 i got two youtube channels so check out both of those. And then while we're discussing here today, of course, the classic superstars book, soft cover available on Amazon, cheaper on Amazon. That's where I recommend getting it. Hard cover is an exclusive variant chase edition at Barnes and Noble. Uh, it's pricey. I mean, it's about the size of a textbook, obviously, but uh, it is pretty cool to have. That's for sure. Uh, maybe I'm biased. I don't know. But Amazon Barnes and Noble exclusive retailers for the book. There you yeah. go. And it doesn't matter where in. people buy it. Like you get paid the same either way, right? Like no matter yeah. how someone yeah. buys it. Okay, I get a so. couple of pennies on every dollar. I mean, that's just the way the books are, but I, it's a labor I, of love I, at the end of the day, for sure. I'm going to do everyone a solid. And I know you did this in your video as well, and you're promoting it as of right now, at least Amazon really good deal over there on Amazon. Yeah. Um, so go, go check yeah, that out. And Amazon is actually selling it for the cost to print the book. So obviously they can afford to lose money, but they're still, you know, paying me everything. So, I, hey, that's great. Take advantage of Amazon. Let's take advantage of them. Grab it at a cheap cost for sure. I don't know how long it I don't have any control over it. So hopefully and forever. You, and if you want a signed copy from you, best way is just to reach out to you directly. Yeah, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I mean, it's just a, a couple of I basically, it's just you're paying for the uh, extra shipping just to get there. So not too much more. So Cool. Kyle, we appreciate it. Guys, all the links are below where you can support Kyle, where you can check out the book as well. Um, and yeah, we appreciate you, you joining joining us, coming back on the show. It's great to have Jeremy Pedower on here for the first, uh, I guess, fourth of the first three-fourths of this interview as well. So we appreciate you guys. It's always great talking to people who have been on the show before, catching up with everybody. And again, thank you for, for everything you do with the, the figure collecting community. Yeah. And uh, everyone, go check out the book. Go, yeah, go buy the book. Just let me know. <laughs> we appreciate it guys thank you for tuning in and we will be right back here on the spotlight we're back big thanks to jeremy Pedauer and to kyle peterson for joining us here on today's episode again all the links are below to support both men go check out kyle's book go get a copy of kyle's book guys we appreciate everybody hanging out with us today in the chat uh watching if you're watching on demand we appreciate you guys watching catching up with us we will be back next week with a new episode of the spotlight talking all the things going on in the world of professional wrestling it's kind of a quiet week Hopefully everyone enjoys um, some NCAA tournament this weekend. That's what I'll be watching here in about an hour as the games begin to kick off. Uh, no collision as, as it usually is on Saturday. Kind of, again, quiet week. Hopefully everybody uh, enjoys maybe a break from wrestling because WrestleMania is upon us in the next two weeks, I'm sure, are going to be extremely busy. So, guys, take care of yourself. Have a good Thursday everyone uh subscribe to the channel subscribe here at fightful subscribe to fightful select best five dollars in the business subscribe to fightful overbooked that's our sister channel uh you can check out all the great shows we do over there including in the weeds every monday wednesday friday 10 a.m to noon eastern it's myself and joel pearl we have coexisting with rob and maggie every fridays at 3 p.m eastern we have wrestling made me cry with kylie and auntie collins every sunday at 12 at noon eastern uh, we have New Japan Bread Club. We have Indy. They just did an interview with Nyla Rose. Go check that out. Mike and Reg interviewing Nyla Rose. Check that out over on Fife Overbooked. They have Corey Brennan in interviewing a lot of uh, UK talent. So go check out those interviews. Again, we appreciate you guys. All the love, all the support. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll be back next week. Bye, everyone.